and we're live. Hello guys, and welcome back. It's David here, and I have a fantastic guest and a fantastic podcast ready for you. Do we call it a podcast on YouTube? I guess it is. It a is podcast. still a podcast. A live podcast. Uh, we are going to talk about the future of gambling, and I have a longtime uh, casino exec, Brian Stanton. He's been a friend of the school. He started out as a friend of the school. Friend of the school, friend of Alex's. Friend of Alex, and now he's a friend of Casino Quest. He's here today. And this is an out-of-the-box uh, executive and the perfect person to have this discussion with me. Uh, so I'm, I'm really excited. This is, uh, this, is, this is a big day for me, sir. Really? Uh, really? Well, because in the past, we've had a lot of Wait, topical let, discussions. Let me, let me sign an autograph. <laughs> You can have my autograph later. You don't know, dude. I have fans, dude. I yeah. have fans. Oh. But this is going to be a, a probative show, unlike unlike many that we've had. I, I don't know how I feel about probative. <laughs> well, no tickler, just probative. <laughs> uh, but I think you guys stay tuned. This is going to be a very interesting show. We're, of course, going to give out some merch. And we're going to do Vegas, the future of Vegas, uh, at the end. So we're going to put that. That's like, you know, we're going to, that's the, the, sort of the hook. Keep you guys sort of in and listening. But we're gonna start with some interesting topics. We're gonna get right to it. Uh, we have a little bit of a format. We'll get back to some of the promos, like like my dice spinner ring. See how I threw that in there? Yeah, I'm gonna get, look at this. Anybody wanna roll? Anybody wanna roll? They're on our shop, casinoquest.com. All right, I know, okay, all right. Um, the first thing we're, we're gonna start with, because a lot of people, we, we talked about this a little before the show as well. Uh, I, I broke in uh, many years ago, and I've always heard uh, can, can that- Can you define many? Many, too many. <laughs> I look fantastic on this screen, but it requires a lot of lighting, a lot of good stuff. Uh, no, 1991. And I remember one of the first things I heard as I was dealing, because I, I dealt at the Golden Gate, I broke in, and we, we had shills. There were shills that worked downtown uh, that shilled the game because people just weren't coming up to play to play dice. And, um, and I've always heard dice is a dying game, craps is a dying game. We have a really big craps community. So what are your thoughts about crafts being a dying game, sir? Absolutely not. <laughs> you know, I, you've been hearing since the beginning. When Atlantic City opened, it's going to hurt Vegas. When Tribal opened, it's going to hurt Vegas. And all it does is create more customers. And I don't see crafts dying anytime soon. Uh, a little bit of concern is the, the cost of entry to the game with, with rising minimums. You know, inflation affecting everything as well as wages go up and health insurance goes up, right. and then the minimums go up, and it's also a supply and demand issue with the, with labor shortages. So, I, I don't see craps dying anytime soon. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, so craps needs four dealers, yeah, uh, ideally, uh, and a box person. Of course, all that's yeah, maybe a box person. Maybe it's amazing we've gotten rid of, but anyways, I can go on about that, commiserate about that, but. Um, yeah, so uh, Craps is still here, and, and I think, believe it or not, our YouTube channel has played a role. Uh, Color Up, there's quite a few content creators out there who focus on dice. Those of us that come across Craps on its own, uh, we, we fall in love with the game. I mean, if you, if you deal the games uh, and you end up being a Craps dealer, that's literally all you want to deal. Yeah. And interestingly, we get calls. The, the biggest demand out there for new dealers is crap dealers across the board, and that's always been a thing. Demand for Craps here in Vegas is, is literally through the roof. Uh, like you say, there's a, there's a labor shortage. You know, dice is a little harder to learn, okay. bit of a learning curve. Uh, but we've gotten calls from all over the country, especially where, where Craps has been uh, a new entry, yeah. uh, where they've gone from class two to class three gaming. For those of you, so class two gaming is essentially bingo gaming, where the, where the house doesn't really take a stake. It's 50-50, and then they collect some sort of vig or commission. Uh, class three gaming is full on gambling. You're betting against the house. Uh, and, and they take a stake in, in what your action is. And craps is obviously one of those games. They have like this bingo bingo craps in a few places, but that's well, not. The card craps the card in California. Craps. But, you know, one of the maybe only good things about the pandemic was it, it allowed uh, regulators and, and jurisdictions to open up. So Arizona, Florida, California, all looking at ball and dice adding or have added already, which is just going to grow demand in Vegas for Craps. Yeah, hundred percent. Because when you when you play it locally, you still want to come to Vegas. You yeah. still want to be part of this scene. All right. So that leads us to: Is it time for the commercial? Uh, dude, I'm gonna wait for him to just to cue me in. Can they see you, hair dude? Can you just like literally show them that you're still in the? Yeah, there he is. Hey. Right All right. You tell me. You cue me in, and then we're. So so the first real big thing about the future of gambling, and and I hear this a lot because the the other day I read two articles almost back to back. So I was researching this uh, this podcast. 
and it was amazing. The, the first article written in 2020 was quite literally the death of brick and mortar casino. Wow. And the second article was that, you know, obviously countering that. But the, but the death of brick and mortar, interesting, I got a lot more shares and a lot more views. People were seem, seemed to be very excited that someone was predicting the death. What do you think about the death of brick and mortar casinos? I would bet against that. I'm, I think it's never going away. You can't replicate the experience of a casino. The roar of a craps pit, the you know, music stage off to the side, the, just this, the noise from the slot machines, the, the chatter from the blackjack table. You can't replicate that experience online. Online, it's, it's additive. It, it's great for the industry. Mm -hmm. But brick and mortar is never going away. Uh, you know, I 100% agree. In fact, the examples this person used was young people's engagement of Facebook and Pinterest. I don't, I don't, it's funny because the young people that I'm around uh, don't use either one of those yeah, no, platforms. Young people do not use Facebook. Facebook especially. As, as a father of four, none yeah. of them have a Facebook account. And you know, what's, you know what's really stunning to me is like record stores are back. Vinyl. Yeah. A lot of young people are returning to sort of the classic experiences. Hiking, camping doing things that are physical. Yes, they play video games. Yes, they're they're autistic and they have ADHD and they're addicted to Adderall. No, wait, that's a different that's a different podcast. Uh, <laughs> by the way, I was telling someone the other day, you know, uh, well, no, no never mind. Let me not let me not get on a tangent. But ultimately, I think that people still yearn for interaction. They yearn for the Vegas experience, yeah. right? You watch the movies, see the dice roll, people yelling. You know, people come here for that. That's why I I was a consultant. Uh, some years ago for, for a large network casino that was investigating ETGs. Um, and, a, and a lot of local casinos that had a, already adopted ETGs, electronic table games, had metrics for, for how, you know, the types of engagement. And they played more like slot machines. Remember there used to be the debate, is this a slot, is this a table game? Yeah. You know, which department is this gonna fall under? And, and clearly, in the local casinos that had embraced ETGs, it, it was different than Vegas. So when Vegas was entertaining, it was like, well, it's a whole different metrics. You get you roll out of bed in your bunny slippers down to your local you know, casino and you're happy to deal with an ETG. But Vegas is its own experience. People come here for the whole thing. Yeah. Not just to sit on a digital, people do play digital machines, but it plays like a slot machine. People buy in for less, they play less. You follow, it's, it's a whole different experience. I, I keep hearing the death of brick and mortar. And it, strangely enough, people much smarter than us, I'm assuming, you know, people that with their, 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 their hands on the trigger are investing billions of dollars. Billions with bees. <laughs> bees. Building out Vegas. Vegas is, on, is, is quite literally on fire. Yeah. Uh, it, $54 billion casino win last year. Uh, some of the highest, the highest win of all time, even, even exceeding 2019 numbers. And, and that was, you know, the pre-pandemic. Um, and so, like, across the street, we have Fontainebleau, which is, is adding a casino. Uh, we have uh, what else is being built? What 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 else is being built? We have uh, we have Mirage, of course, which is Mirage was sold to, sold. A, to a tribe, and there's a couple other rumored to be for sale. Yeah, so Durango. Vegas is Vegas is going big. I mean, the money's coming in, the investments being made. I mean, Vegas Vegas is definitely going big. All right, uh, is can I do it now, buddy? I'm I'm so desperate to get this off my my. I got to do the party. No, can I talk about the party? We're gonna get to the. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. All right. Uh, just so you know, we have a party. What? We're having a Today? party. No. Tonight? <laughs> Not tonight. So August 17th through the 21st, hosted by the Westgate, ah. we are going to have uh, Alex's uh, birthday bankroll bash. And so if you're interested in that, all you have to do is go to casinoquest.biz, and there's a big yellow button, birthday bash. Hit that. You can read all about all the events that we're having. And then at the very bottom, there's an RSVP form. Make sure to fill that out. Now... We are sending, as soon as uh, Dennis is done with the logo for that event, we are gonna be sending out the, uh, the a newsletter with a separate invitation. You'll be able to uh, give us your birthday. We need your birthday because we, we're gonna have, uh, if you wanna have a player's card and the whole concierge experience, we can pre-populate that uh, into Westgate system. And so instead of having to wait in line, they're gonna literally have everybody's card ready to go, ready to be part of the experience. And we have negotiate fantastic rates so 57 dollar weekday rates with no resort fee no Stat. resort fee this is a hilton this is the westgate used to yeah. be the hilton this is where elvis stayed 73 dollars on the weekends no resort fee and vip check-in no waiting in line concierge check-in uh, from start to finish uh we're going to be splitting the events between casino quest and there we have a pizza party scheduled 
We have a tacky gambler event scheduled two of those with winners and prizes yes yeah, so bring your tacky gambler outfit some of you don't have to try very hard some of you have that just just come as you are kind of come thing Come as you are and win <laughs> and just win uh because it's gonna be tough to beat too bad alex can't win because he has some outfits out there that are really doozers but we also have a pizza party and it, at first we were gonna have it catered we're gonna, but we're gonna pay for that we're gonna have some pizza catered we're gonna have it right here at casino quest so uh, some, some other fantastic events. Of course, there's Kino. Got to be some Kino. If you haven't heard, big Kino. Big Kino. At the first I, I had heard several times. At the Strat. At the Strat. Why don't we have this Kino <laughs> game? Why don't we have this Kino game? Stunned. I stunned everybody. By the way, I hit a hand pace two days in a row to make up for our craft losses. Went right over to, to Kino. Uh, Brian was at the Strat at the time. Right. Was nice enough to get me a 20 card. It was the only 20 card. It was a quarter, though. So quite the investment. $5 a hand. $5 a hand. And uh, I hit a hand pay both times, wow. both days, in a row. It's quite, it's quite something. Because we would lose on dice, and you would think the opposite would be true. Uh, Mathematically, math yeah. <laughs> Mathematically. But, but are, are we coming here for math or no. coming here for fun? No one comes to Vegas for math. People yeah. come for fun. That's what I think is missed. All right, well, let's get, back to, uh, let's get back to the show. But don't forget to RSVP. Go down to the bottom, RSVP. The newsletter is going to go out either Monday or Tuesday. Ask Dennis why he doesn't have the graphics. Can everybody just, if you're in the chat right now, can you go, uh, please, Dennis, or, you know, boo, Dennis, I don't know, something <laughs> like this. And, and I think we're going to have, we're going to have, by the way, there's, there's actually people out there. They're going to ask some questions. Uh, but we'll, we'll get to them. We're going like, to save those for the like end, right, Dennis? people or are these Elon Musk spam bot people? Well, you know, <laughs> either way, whatever makes us a billion dollars, I'm in. <laughs> right? I'll if I had it. Elon Musk problems, I'm, I'm know, good to go. <laughs> One spam bot bless, who cares? All right. Uh, so... So one of the, you know, they talk about brick and mortar. What do you think the opportunity is brick and mortar building out into other states? So what is the experience going to look like? We're going to have, um, you know, new states, new territories. I mean, do you think like th there's there's rumors that Texas is entertaining uh, some casinos? Even Hawaii has looked into it's, some casinos. You know, we're one of the few industries that pays our taxes, right? Ah. Mo most times it's hey, we'll build this factory here, but we want this this tax cut, we want this land, we want this freeway. Casinos are like, hey, we'll give you whatever we need to, to open the doors or, you know. Yeah. So it's very lucrative for the states. They generate the tax revenue and you get an experiential thing, which, you know, you talked about earlier with the younger people. I think they want experiences, whether it's their avocado toast and fancy brunches or... Or their uh, rave, sh you know, shows that Alex did. Alex go this year? Yeah, he did. EDC, do same we, thing. Do we, do we have pictures did with he the wear sock? The panda suit? Yeah, the sock, the suits. <laughs> I, he, he, we had a suit that was sent in. I was supposed to wear, it, but I was, you know, didn't feel all that comfortable to be honest. But yeah. But it's experiential. So if it opens up in other jurisdictions, it creates new customers. Um, but there's nothing like coming to Vegas. You know, when you tell a story and say, hey, I was at my local tribal casino and I won two grand, does that story really resonate with anybody? Mm -hmm. But if you come back from vacation and say, hey, I won two grand in Vegas, everybody wants to hear that story. Yeah, 100%. I, I do think that it's the expansion of, of casinos like through, literally throughout the country. So there's, there's 26 major uh, areas that have, have casinos, states and territories, all, all things considered. And uh, the Bureau of Labor Statistics actually, it, it's amazing because I was trying, I was doing this uh, report for the state. And uh, one of the biggest growth careers that you can find is quite literally gaming related. Wow. It, our jobs in gaming, they expect gaming year over year to be a tw experience 20% growth rate. Now this is pre-pandemic. Uh, some, some of those things obviously were slowed, you know, yeah. hiccup, hiccup to a year or so. But, but I agree, I, I really think that, uh, especially now that casinos have evolved, it used to be, there used to be all of this sort of prejudice in some ways against casinos yeah. and gambling, but, but a lot of that has changed. Uh, you know, gambling has successfully gone into communities where, you know, obviously some people have a problem uh, and, uh, you know, but that's like with anything else. You yeah, know, people have problems shopping, people have problems yeah. drinking. If, if it's done responsibly, it's a, it's a great value for your entertainment dollar yeah, when you look at all, all the things around it. And, you know, I think when we talk about millennials and younger generations, there was always an intimidation factor about craps especially. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't want to walk up to the game or blackjack, I don't want to hit wrong. But the internet and podcasts and all this information casino out quest. there, Casino Quest, <laughs> it, it, it helps people feel more comfortable coming up to the game because they don't feel like they're going to do something wrong and, and they see how much fun it can be. I had a, a very high-end executive tell me, after the 08 financial crisis that we lost a generation of gamblers. 
because they weren't able to come to their parents when they turned 21 because their parents were out of money. Mm -hmm. Well, I think the pandemic, we gained a generation of gamblers because it was one of the few things that you could do for entertainment. You know, the clubs weren't open, some restaurants weren't open, shows weren't open, mm -hmm. but you could come and gamble. And I think a whole generation learned this is a valuable experience for my entertainment dollar. Oh, 100 percent. I mean, I'll be honest, the pandemic, as much as a pandemic was a hit to our businesses. I mean, literally, the oh, school yeah. went out of business. Casino quit, went out of business. Casino shut down. But we we gained a lot of fans and a lot of people had time to sit home, build crap tables you know, watch our videos, you know, visit Color Up and, and Craps Hawaii and Hawaii Crab, all these different content creators that had nothing else to do but yeah. talk about gaming and, and build home games and have these experiences. And so I agree. I think, I think it, you know, what's amazing is, uh, you know, every, like, you know, we were talking about like the, we, we, we always move forward. We find a way to move forward. I, you know, and I think a lot of people that, that, that just so focused on the drama and the naysaying and all the negative, I think that's, that's all lost uh, because everyone else is focused on just kind of moving forward. Well, and that's what know? Vegas is about, moving forward, right? We're always reinventing ourselves just from a city. When you look at the skyline, it reinvents. But the business in itself, we reinvent ourselves. You know, and it goes in cycles. For a while, it was three-hour dinners that were the big thing. Then it was shows. Then it was nightclubs. Now we're getting some of those supper clubs back. But gaming has always been a part of that. And now that we can more readily show it out there through social media, it, it just shows that excitement that can be had. I, I totally agree. You know, going from the days when I first broke in, we confiscated cell phones at the front door. Now you can go in and videotape yourself, live stream yourself gambling. That's it. Yeah, that's that's one of those things. It's amazing. There's still this disconnect, I think. There are still quite literally this old school mentality. Oh, yeah. I walk into, We walked into a casino that we, we have as a partner. I was actually going in there to talk about their pit and new dealers. And we happened to have a camera. We were coming from another location. We had a camera with us. And, and you know, Dennis doesn't leave his you know, ridiculously expensive camera in the car. You <laughs> no. follow? Oh, yeah. So, so he brings it with us. And so he's got the camera. And they're like, no, no pictures, sir. Like, dude, don't worry about it. You know what I mean? Well, I think that, that's a training issue, right? Yeah, it, 100%. It, as, as you start to evolve it, it's new. And, you know, if you've been a security guard for 20, 30 years, yeah, for, this for, was tw that. for 20 of them, it was absolutely no photos. And now, yeah. now. you know, that it's yeah. allowed. Yeah. And I, I, and I think also that's part of the experience because now that you can have the hashtags yeah. on the table, which you brought to a, a certain a casino. Hashtag selfie, right? Because yeah. you win a big pot and you want to share it. Yeah. And boom, you can share it just like that. Well, you know, you, you look through social media and you see pictures of people's dinner, picture of their rooms, pictures mm. in the show, mm. selfies with the artwork. What mm. is the most impactful thing that can happen to you on a trip to Vegas? It's hitting your birthday number straight up. It's hitting yeah. a blackjack all in. It, yeah. It's hitting that roll. Why wouldn't you want to memorialize that in photo like you do the rest of your life? And it That's always it. seemed very silly to me. And I think when, when we talked about it and we researched it, it really I couldn't find a good answer why it wasn't done other than maybe some of the old time gangsters didn't want a picture with their girlfriend found That's out it. by their wife. Yeah. And I mean, I, I recognize that people are worried about who's in the background, but no one cares about the background. Right. They're, they're taking a picture of themselves. I mean, that's all that I, matters. I saw something the other day. You're in 10,000 pictures you don't even know about. You know, yeah, 100%. People are walking through. At the gym, photos, in the background, the FaceTime. You know, before we get you know off the whole brick and mortar thing. By the way, we have a, we have a couple great topics. Oh, you have time. You made you made. Time I got all day, my man. All right, good. Because we we have some great. This might be a little longer one, but we have some great topics to have. We're gonna talk about Vegas. We're gonna talk about the tech. And uh, and I, I kind of want to clarify like why Brian was the, literally the only person I wanted because uh, I, I reached out to Al. You and Alex are better friends. You yeah. guys know each other for a while. You work with each other. You were his boss at one point. I was casino. his boss. And um, and I, you were the only person I wanted for the discussion. And I'll I'll tell you why. Uh, so uh, Brian was a VP at the Strat uh, some uh, a, a year ago. He's moved on to another another position. Uh, like he's still a casino exec, a high place casino exec. Uh, and interestingly, I have um, interacted with the Strat over the course of you know my lifetime, my career. It, it was a casino I used to I used to frequent. Uh, Bob Supak was very famous for having the, just the weirdest promotions <laughs> on slots. What a salesman! He really was, dude. Uh, they they were giving away coupons all the time, and he had he always said you you could collect these little buckets that he had, and you know a whole bunch of stuff. They had this whole, and then when they were going to build the tower. He, um, you know, he was collecting, you know, all those people were trying to invest and he was going to do this timeshare thing. And then there was the Godzilla talk or, the, you know, the, the ape going up. There was all these things. But it was always um, a sort of a low rent casino. Yeah. 
right? The casino dealers didn't make very much money. It was a break in house, very completely. The action was very muted. Uh, you know, it, its location was, you know, it, it kind of, you know, is it on the strip? Is it not on the strip? It's, it, it, that. it's on the strip. It's on the strip. Yeah. If you, if you, by the way, if you see the strip, the silhouette of the strip, uh, they always, always throw have the strat, the strat as yeah. the end of it. So how is it not on the strip? But of course, the Sahara logo. <laughs> not to get, not to get weird, is the strip ends here. You know, did you see that? Oh, I, I, you know, yes, you know what I've I'm talking about. That, I'm just, yeah. you don't have to admit to anything. Let's just say I pass that in my car, and I know. All right, well, it, interestingly, so. Uh, you know, we are we're dealer school. So, you know, if you for those of you who don't know our, our channel CG dealer school is the actual dealer school here in Las Vegas and we train people to become dealers and we used to not really send a whole lot of dealers to the strat before Brian was there and, and the reason for that is they just didn't make a lot of money. And there were, we were we were tapped into other casinos that you know where the dealers started out making more money. And when Brian got there, he he started out with this uh, you know program to you know light the place up, move the pit, and then he made he he doubled the dealer poke rate almost instantly. In fact, not just doubled. We you know you remember May? Yeah. I could throw her out there. She's I have her permission. But we sent a, a, this dealer with incredible personality to the strat, uh, and I, I mean she's bubbly on a whole nother level. But she's very friendly, very engaged. She made seven thousand dollars in two days. Mm -hmm. I think was a was a record. She was the first person to really just like blow there, it out. There, of the there park. were a couple of them. There was yeah. a couple. It, it, it came fast early on. Yeah. So I mean, just to expound on what you're talking about, coming out of the pandemic, we're we're looking at how do we compete? You know, visitation is predicted to be way down. Dealers have masks on. You know, the only thing I was really asked to do in that job was to change the culture because anybody that had been into the Strat prior to 2019, mm -hmm. it, it was. It had a bunch of different owners. Didn't you know? Was neglected as a property, and then you know when it was bought, they did put a huge investment into the property. So we wanted to make sure that the staff gave the level of service that went with it. And we're sitting there coming out of a pandemic, saying, "How do we compete?" And we said, "You know what? Let let's let the dealers go table for table, keep their own tips." Hadn't been done on the strip in in 30 years. Mm -hmm. And I was just at a table games conference with an ex casino cheat who wrote a scathing article about me, how naive I was and <laughs> everything wow. that was gonna go wrong about wow. collusion and cheating and all that. And he actually apologized to me this. He's like, ah, maybe maybe I was a little bit wrong about that article. But it, a lot of things went well and it did. It, it, it changed some dealers' lives and it increased guest service on that property tenfold. Uh, yeah, 100%. So you should know the number of dealers, and this is a rare thing, there, there are a few times in that where dealers come back and they rave about a boss or an experience. The, the, the experience at the Strat, I, I still have dealers, I have dealers now that have been there two years and could, could get another job. They don't want to go anywhere. They're, they're just, they're, they're done, they're happy with the Strat, they don't, they don't want to leave. And that, that was never a thing. I don't think in the history of the Strat being a casino was ever a thing. Uh, there's there's some fantastic people that are still you know, oh, no, they're, part they're, of that the experience. management team there is yep. still fantastic they do a great job yep uh, you know it's it, it speaks wonders it you know the best compliment I got I, I took a, another executive over there who mm -hmm. said if I would have blindfolded him he would have never guessed what property he was on just from yeah, the, the physical aspect they did a great job with yep. that but then the, the culture and the, the experience that the dealers give off has is, is been phenomenal. It's amazing. I mean, to go even to go in there today and see how busy it is and how engaged, the high limit pit, you know, the, the, the quality of dealing, the level of dealing, uh, the engagement, it really, it, it's something else. I, it was a sight. To, I mean, for someone who's been in this business a long time, I've never seen that kind of transformation on the pit. I've seen properties being refurbished and upgraded, all those things happen, but, but the culture, never. I, I think it's probably, you know, I, I've heard from multiple sources, you know, probably the most successful remodel rebrand when you look at it in yep. totality from the, the physical box to the culture to the experience they, they do a great job there yeah no 100 percent man anyway so that's why I, I quite literally because I, I think I think that the business as a whole it is is moving forward and it is looking to innovate I, I the, my one takeaway on the future of gaming is is that we still have uh, for lack of a better word a lot of cogs in the wheel so to speak. And, and I feel like there's, there's I, I have discussions that are almost mind-numbing given like where we're at in, in this cycle and, yeah. and how we're, 
it, you know, culture has changed even even as millennials and, and Generation Z and, and the interactions they're looking to have. I mean, um, it, it, it's quite amazing. Wait, Anyways, are you, are you a baby boomer? Or are you? Uh, oh my God, uh, sir! What, what generation? <laughs> What's are you? going on? How many grandkids? Uh, I'm a, I'm a, you know, late sixties. <laughs> I may or may not have seen a beetle alive at some point. No. Uh, Oh God! But I look good on this. Uh, this is a great color, buddy. Good I like filter. this color. He's, he's good, filter. good filter. No, I like this filter. <laughs> uh, come on down and don't see the other filter. Okay. <laughs> All right. So uh, we're so let, let's let's look at so the brick and mortar casinos. I mean, are, are we expecting them to get bigger? Is it going to be more of a boutique type of experience? I mean, what do you think? I mean, I know that a lot of casinos being planned for this trip are more integrated type resorts because there's so many other areas that casinos generate revenue now yeah. that have become crap. The foodies alone, I think, yeah, two hundred dollar meals, my god, you know, you don't even need crap tables for that. But uh, so, do, do you think that's that's the evolution of gaming spaces, like one massive property, integrated property? Well, I think there's lots of different ways to to skin a cat. It's you know how how what can you offer to your customer? But I think. The, the days of lost leaders and, and you know, uh, a cheap buffet or, or whatever are gone, and it's mm -hmm. gonna be experiential and it, it needs to, to turn a profit. And that experience of a great meal or that great entertainment option or that great gaming experience is, is really going to drive us forward. Well, good. All right, so, uh, well, any more Foxwoods on the horizon, properties like that? Just massive. Just massive. Just it, throwing you know, it out there. I, I hadn't heard, you know, the rumors about Texas and Florida, obviously. Seminole has Florida. I know mm -hmm. a couple other major gaming companies were trying and trying to get in there. Yeah. But you, you have a jurisdiction that did not have gaming before, like Texas, or if Florida could get some competition. Yeah, I could see them building a massive, massive property down there. It just depends on how many gaming licenses are allowed. Yeah. You, know, you saw that in Macau. You're gonna see that in Japan with limited licenses. Mm -hmm. The state of New York, you know, you're know, you gonna have a couple of them maybe going at the racetracks there or some other bids. I think I heard Chicago just got uh, a, a bid approved. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if, if the customers are there and the demand is there, yeah, build them as big as you can make them. By the way, we, we already have a dealer coming to the school to work in Chicago. <laughs> Just got, dude, wait a second. Give it a minute. Let it percolate. All right. Um, all right. So let's um, let's look inside the casino. So uh, we're, we're going to, before we go to sort of the online experience, the, okay. the online gaming experience, a lot is going on inside the casino. Uh, in terms of uh, the evolution of the player experience, the tables themselves, how we interact with the games, cash, all those types of things. So my, my first big question that I get literally the most is classic tables. So do we think that we're evolving, and I don't mean ETG games, I mean a blackjack table with the dealer and cards instead of some other, so you know, we've both been like G2E, and we see a lot of the new tech. Some of them have the pucks where you don't need any cash. Uh, you know, they could easily just put up a screen. I, I guess that's, that's an ETG at that point. But, but do you see like a classic craps table with cra classic dealers staying as part of that experience? I, I do, but you know, the one constant is change. You know, everybody freaked out when coins went away from slot machines and we went to Tito tickets. Mm -hmm. And yet slot revenue continues to, to thrive through that. Mm -hmm. I, I don't see chips going away anytime soon, mm -hmm. but I'm an ease of use guy, right? You have your phone and you're able to walk up and just tap the register at Starbucks or wherever yeah. you're going. You know, so if you could have that kind of integration at a table game and, mm -hmm. you know, hey, I, I fund my account or I just get chips for it. I, I think anything that makes the experience more seamless and easier is going to be better for the casino business. That's a, that's an interesting question. So um, I know at the Strat you could buy in with your with your card right on the table now. Yeah, right? there's lots of places that could do that. I think we were the first one on this trip where you could use your debit card. And it was, you know, if I get up and then I have to go wait in line at the ATM, and you know, whatever happens, I miss the cocktail waitress while I'm gone. Right. I miss a, a great streak or a great roll. Right. You know, let, let me if I want to be in action, let me stay in action and get the chips right there. I think again, anything that's seamless and makes the experience better and more efficient is, is better for everybody. Nobody wants to wait in line. Nobody wants to go to the DMV. Oh God! I swear to God, DMV. Yeah, no kidding. Can can Nevada just sort of you know copy what Arizona is doing and move that up here real quick so we we can get ahead of that that kind of thing? Just saying, just saying. Love Nevada DMV, but damn. All right. Anyways, uh, all right. Skill based machines. Oh, 
this is a bit of a, I could do a whole drama on this. We, we had a company out here. I don't want to mention the, the guy that was the CEO kind of got in a little bit of trouble, but he looked down his brow at me and Alex, uh, what we were trying to do. So realistically, we, we, as Casino Quest was starting, and we, we have some innovative ideas. We're going to throw them out there at the end. That's because I think the future of game, I have a few ideas about the future game that are very specific. So we went to this skill-based company, and me and Alex, and I'm, okay, I'm not yet a boomer, just to be clear. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Are, you, are, you, are you sure about that? You are you sure faster, about that? Right? Are, are, are the majority of your fans boomers? Well, like, are, are we you, have a lot of friends. Do they identify you as being one of them? I mean, you know, I do have I have five grandkids, uh, thanks to one very populous son, you know, <laughs> working on his own village. It sounds like boomer status. Uh, anyways, uh, let's move on. So, uh, so we so we went to this uh, big company uh, that uh, raised like 50, 60, some ridiculous amount of money, millions of dollars to build this company. And they were working on some skill-based machines. And we wanted to promote them at our space. We wanted to give them space and have the customers. Of course, a couple months later, COVID hit, kind of killed everything. But we, we wanted to put them in the window. We thought they were interesting and that, you know, maybe, you know, given our audience, we do have a y few younger people. So we go down to this company to kind of interact. We end up actually meeting the CEO who, um, who had to move on due to some issues. But um, we were trying to play their games. And the one game broke while we were playing it, so we couldn't play that one. And the other game, even Alex, uh, I mean, we just were like, what? It looked like Candy Saga, but it wasn't. Uh, but we couldn't figure out what the hell we're supposed to do with this skill-based machine. And then we were like, well, then there was the skill bonus. So who gets the skill bonus? Dennis? Like none of us, yeah. I don't know how good you are with the joystick, but unless you're, you know, oh. every now and then. <laughs> well, some of us are, are better. I'm, I'm talking about the quick, oh, well, there we go. God, it's the innuendo channel, you know. Is it? Yeah, yeah it is a little bit. <laughs> um, I, think, I think the issue with skill-based gaming is who wants to put in the time to do that in order to be entertained? You know, it, it's putting in the time on the driving range to be a good golfer or going to top golf and having a few beers and hitting a few balls and playing that game it's that same kind of thing no. people are coming to vegas to have fun they're not here to do math you know yeah. you see in the comments all the time about triple zero roulette or six to five blackjack the majority of people don't care because they're not there to do math 100%. yes over the course of their lifetime are they better off playing a game with better rules of course but in the short run, anything can happen, and it's about anticipation, excitement, mm -hmm. playing a game. You know That's the it. odds. Are, why are some athletes some of the biggest gamblers? Because it, it's a competition for them, right? Mm -hmm. They know the odds aren't stacked in their favor, and they want to you know, have that alpha male, alpha female attitude and try and beat the house. Yeah. I think that's where the, the lack happens in skill game based gaming mm -hmm. who wants to put in the time to learn that skill mm -hmm. when i'm on vacation i just want to have fun yep. see the real spin see the dealer flip over the cards yep cheer have yep. fun i uh i agree skill base is dead let's just put it there nail in the coffin i don't see most of those games have are absent you, you it's really hard to find them i think there may be a couple left somewhere uh in fact uh one of the last casinos that had them they had to actually hire someone separate just to teach people how to interact with yeah. the games until they, they pulled them out. Because that, that was it. People couldn't figure out. They had that skill bonus, but you had to be a bit twitchy. You had to be like yeah. a dentist kind of thing to win it. Well, it's, you know, again, who are you going to bring into your to your casino if you're running a skill base? You're going to bring in someone mm -hmm. that studied the game nine ways from Sunday, and they're going to minimize their edge, and they're taking up space for someone that is going to be a recreational gambler there for fun, whose mm -hmm. wallet share is there for entertainment, not to try and take advantage of... Mm -hmm of a game because they've, yep. they've built the skill level up. You know, you know what's interesting is we, we get, th so there's this real minority, really niche group of people that examine, you know, what me and Alex do on the math. And, and our pushback is it's, it's literally never about the math. Most of the people that I've dealt to, it's always about opportunity. You know, that's why I'd rather play the million dollar win machine instead of grinding out on some lower, for me to try to hit, even though I know my odds are stacked against me, but that's the hope and prayer. That's yeah. why I'm gambling in the first place. When I'm on a crap table, if I work the math and I grind out a, a pass line or a come bet, I don't stand to win a lot of money. There's no opportunity for me. So all of our strategies work on literally, if you're there to play, play. If well, not, do something else. Again, it's, it's what's entertaining for you. Right. Is doing math and grinding out a small edge, is that entertaining for you? Mm -hmm. Or is going for the long shot? 
mm-hmm. more entertaining for you. Yeah. You know, we just had a long shot hit, what, at the at the Kentucky Derby. And how many people, when they saw that betting slip, would have said, oh, you're out of your mind. The, the long shots never come in. You're wasting your money. Yeah. But that's a moment that those people that bet on that race are going to probably remember for a very long time. Yeah. Same thing happens in the casinos. Yep. No, I, I agree 100%. All right. We're oh. gonna. I'm gonna go down the. Uh, I'm gonna go down the list of interior inside the game. All well, right. Before so, you get too far, you can oh, do the promos now. I got some promos. Yeah. Oh, I can do the promos. Well, I already did them. Really. RSVP. Into the Casino Quest Stop is. If you want to reserve some time, I I have a Zoom enabled uh, dice with David. If you actually want to deal dice, most people just want to chat, but that's okay too. You know. Learn got, to deal dice. Or or, it, it or is, deal or deal. We well, so it's it's dice with David. Dude. We talk strategy, opportunity. Oh. I mean, the learn to deal stuff. Well, that'd be tough. Imagine that. One hour, ready to go. Ready there to you go. go. On to your local tribe. Uh, I I think the biggest thing for us is we've been evolving our shopcasinoquest.com, and I mean, we we have a lot of people buying these. So I I've been researching the best quality. These are stainless steel spinny dice rings. You can't really see it, but let's just say they're really nice. Uh, there's stainless steel with black enamel, and uh, is, that, if, is that to help balance your fingers when you're throwing the <laughs> dice? <laughs> when I'm setting, dude, you don't, yeah. understand, you don't understand. Uh, but these look—if ever I want to get a roll, I got—I got a black one and a gold. I actually wear these. I wear these now. I—I I get a little twitchy, uh, and instead of eating now, I just do this. So there's that. You know. Uh, what else do we have, sir? Into the AM. Oh yes, we got it. Into the AM. We have a—we have a sponsor. We love these shirts. It's in the closet. It's uh, into the AM. So if you're interested in some really fantastic graphic te- uh, graphic tees, and I mean really fantastic, take a second, go to CG. Uh, what is it? What's the link? Into the AM, for uh, into the AM dot com forward slash CG dealers. Yeah, into the AM dot com forward slash CG dealers, and, and it's in the description. Get, it's in the description. Yeah, and the link is in the description. I'm telling you, it, they have these. They have this really great astronaut shirt. That's our. Me and Alex will absolutely love it. And you see people now wearing them. Uh, I, I I ran into someone on the strip the other day who wearing one. They're really they feel great. They look great. Uh, so definitely take advantage of that. And uh, they're inf- inflation friendly. You know, I I think you just fulfilled one of my dreams for me. Oh God. I, I feel like I'm on uh, the 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 TV shows, the infomercials where they're selling the. Uh, oh, the that's coming, the dude. That's and... coming. Wait till I wait, I got hats. We're gonna give away some of these hats later. We got, we got, we got so much stuff, dude. We're gonna give away. When if you RSVP, if you're coming to the party, we got. There you go. <laughs> we got, we got lanyards and chip. We're giving everything out for free, dude. This is gonna be a love fest with everything's free. Uh, we're not gonna charge you anything unless you become an affiliate and you start your own fun night company. And there's that. You can sign up. Uh, me and Pit Boss John will be running that on Wednesday. Uh, but apart from that, I think that's it, right? I think that's it. Yep. You want to make a reservation? Just Casino Quest up is. Thank you guys very much. I should always, I should always take a minute to do that. ShopCasinoQuest.com uh, if you want those rings. Oh, 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 one more thing. Look, look, real quick. We're, we have these limited edition. I don't know if you ever guys are ever familiar from back in the day. They used to, Yeah, you got to check this out. So this is from the from the Palms before it was the new Palms now. But the Nova Italiano, this is just one example. We have quite a few. Those are going to go up on the site. We uh, Thanks to Alan, me and Alan. Checks in the mail, Alan. Uh, we, uh, we got a hold of a collection of these. These are limited edition silver coins. And they would drop out of these slot machines. Out of the silver strike machines. The, yeah, the silver yeah. strike machines. And so, you know, you might have, you might spend hundred dollars waiting for these. Normally, these, by the way, these were pretty friendly to drop. Once you were in a hundred bucks, you were pretty. Uh, your expectation of getting one was high. Uh, I, I think you only had to put in a hundred dollars. You almost guaranteed because they wanted to make these. Hundred to get ten. That, hundred to get great, ten. That's yeah, a that's a great deal. trade-off. That's the thing. <laughs> I actually, when when I first got my first executive job. Uh, uh, I uh, that was yeah I, I finally found out that was sort of rigged so that people could you know what I mean at some point, uh, but anyway so we have a bunch of those from all different casinos we have some really old golden nugget ones uh, some really rare ones not too rare, and they'll range from third there's about a point six ounces of silver, and they're all in brilliant uncirculated never touched uh, condition so they're all fantastic we've resealed them so ready to go all right let's get back to the show all right so. Um, we're inside the casino. We're inside the casino. Are you ready? Uh, all right. Uh, I, I, did, you, did you see that one? I, 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 I saw ask. which one the cursor is on. I gotta ask. On, yes. I gotta ask. Roll, so roll to win dice of dice games. So we get we get because we have a lot of dice fans. Yeah. And and some people have enjoyed winning a lot of money on those games. <laughs> I'm just gonna say. Maybe maybe too much. <laughs> maybe too much. So some casinos here in Vegas have taken them out, yeah. 
and some have uh, left them in. Planet Hollywood has this whole other uh, hybrid one where you sit around and you have a monitor, you have your own seat and monitor, and then you move in when it's your turn to shoot, and you're your own yeah. shooter. Have you seen this one? I haven't seen that one, we, but I know of it. We just saw it, and uh, it seems like a lot of work. It's a big, it's a whole big setup. Do you think the this is going to become a new normal, or we go again? Is it the classic craps game? Well, I I think any innovation is good, and you can't get to the final iteration of the thing that works if you don't try every iteration along the way. Mm -hmm. So Roll the Wind came out and it was placed in a lot of jurisdictions before Las Vegas. Uh, we were able to get it into Las Vegas and getting it on a game in a live environment, they, they, some players were able to take advantage of some weaknesses at different properties. I've heard stories of dice sliding. I've heard stories of you know dealers that aren't dice dealers being on the game and, and not understanding what's going on, which ultimately would hopefully be what it was intended for. But now I hope the manufacturers are able to take the information they've gained and put it in because what it does is with the labor shortage, it allows mm -hmm. for less labor, mm -hmm. which is, is good for the casino and good for the players because you can get an extra game open with less dealers. And it's also, with that savings on the labor side, it, it allows a, a lower price point, right? Mm -hmm. So if, if you're going through the Las Vegas Strip or wherever the casino is, and those tables are 15 or $25 for a craps table, maybe this efficiently allows a casino to open it at five or $10, which is better for the, the entry level gambler. Yeah, I love I love that these games have five dollar you know five dollar games, yeah. uh, and and for some people that's been a big miss because uh, you know on the weekends here especially fifteen twenty five dollar games not a lot of five dollar tables so the casinos that do have those or, or do have the um, the individual uh, the bubble craps yeah. that kind of thing still, still allow for a lower price point even though it's not the same game it real and realistically it's literally not the same game well it's the same game just not the same experience it's not the same experience yeah. right. Uh, I mean, the, but the the uh, bubble craps, the odds aren't necessarily the same, so that can change. That, that's and so, especially like in Colorado, some of the casinos that have bubble craps, they don't pay, you know, obviously they pay to the penny, but they don't pay what a normal place bet you don't have. And and honestly, like when, when, um, when before that game was even introduced, when it was just a thought at G2E and it was it was showcased there, you know, I you can't bet, if, if those of you familiar with my double tap, triple ox, these kinds of things where you're moving money around, it's not as easy yeah. to move money around the screen on that one, even though it's a digital screen. It just doesn't work that way. Yeah. You know, by the time they're getting another roll, uh, you just can't get your bets down uh, like you would a, a good dealer. That's the other problem is a lot of times casinos have really resorted to a blackjack dealer moving on to a dice table, yeah. and and that's been a takeaway. But okay, uh, interestingly, let's talk about uh, the next one. Is uh, so we I guess I guess we touched on the cash cashless. I mean, do you think? Yeah. You think cashless games is the future? Or do you think their cash is still oh, be king? No, uh, ca I think cash will always, in some iteration, be king. But if it can be digital cash or cashless, mm -hmm. you know, where it's from my bank account to the table to you know to in the game, mm -hmm. you know, I think there's some hurdles right now with with the whole the way it's being done through a wallet where I have to sign up and then fund the wallet and then you can pull it out that way. Mm -hmm. I don't think that is as easy as the you know experience where I can go up to Apple Pay and just tap. You know, right. So if we can get to that on a slot machine or on a table games, mm -hmm. but it's you know I understand regulators being really cautious with this because there's unintended consequences behind it. Right. And they, when they want to make sure that it is safe for everybody and it doesn't get abused or you don't get unintentionally taken advantage of with it. Because you know, like I told you earlier, I was at a conference about uh, table games and mm -hmm. game security. The cheats are always one step ahead. So when you get into technology stuff, and we're seeing news stories all the time of mm -hmm. companies getting hacked, databases getting hacked, mm -hmm. you know that might be worrisome for for regulators and casinos when you start throwing information out cashless digitally. Yeah, hundred percent. What about crypto? <laughs> so my take on crypto is. Everybody that wants to sell you crypto tells you it's better than cash. And I say, all right, it's better than cash. How do I get some? Yeah. Well, give me some cash and I'll give you some crypto. <laughs> so it's, it seems a little shady to me. Yeah. Um, and then you hear about stories of, of the guy that bought the first pizza with crypto. He's essentially paid, what, $600,000 for that pizza? No, millions now. Millions now? Yeah, $9 million. Yeah. Even, even with the Bitcoin at 30000 I believe. So now, is, yeah. now you, you extrapolate that out to gambling. And now I gambled with this, and, and let's say I lost. I, I lost 10000 in Bitcoin. Well, then Bitcoin goes up 10x. Now, now I've lost $100,000 that trip. <laughs> I'm really so depressed. It, yeah. I think 
it, it's got a place, mm-hmm. but I don't, again, I don't think it takes over for cash. I mean, especially, so, and land-based casinos. Now, there are online casinos offshore, require VPN, that kind of thing, where, you know, there's people playing with crypto and paying in crypto. There are literally crypto casinos. That's all they do. Yeah. In fact, uh, we don't do anything with crypto casinos. So it's... Uh, well, it's, again, I think that gets back to, to the regulators and, and what's yeah. going on with those transactions. You know, historically, casinos it, have been used by nef- nefarious people, which is why we're so strict with things. Right. So I, I don't know enough about crypto to say just what I read in the, in the news headline stories. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and, it, and it seems to be the wild, wild west. And, it is. and I don't know that casinos want to be involved with with the wild wild west and when we say casinos we mean licensed entities Correct. in legal jurisdictions yes. you know not in some island somewhere yeah. island nation where anything goes and we're gonna we're gonna get to the online gaming part of it but we're gonna finish with sort of the inside the brick and mortar uh one of the things i i definitely wanted to uh to touch on it's actually oh here um so we were running a test so one of the technology companies that's uh has lots of installations on the on the in fact um Many of their um, player track, their player tracking system is literally in, in your place. I, I, I can't say their name yeah. specifically, but you know what I'm talking about. So they installed a a money tracking using cameras. So there's a lot of new tech. Whether you use uh, you know radio waves, uh, whether you use the, the the microchips, or whether you use just literally you know AI cameras looking out and and seeing the person, seeing the interact with the checks. And they were they were using a new technology that uses you know facial recognition. It identifies the player. It identifies the ins and outs. So it'll identify if you're betting one hand, two hands, yeah. your win loss in real time, and it sends that information back to whoever yeah. you know is there to look at it. It's stunning how far this technology uh, has evolved. Uh, you can run down the stacks. You can do multicolored rainbow stacks, and it'll it'll figure yeah. out what's in that stack. And, and you can do it over a half hour, an hour. It, it does, there are some hiccups. Uh, if you move the money too quickly uh, or you, you start doing two stacks, that's why it's important for the dealers to be on it. But where do you, where do you think the, the, the player tracking or the, the chip tracking? I mean, do you think that's the, the minute you walk in the door, you're just going to be tracked from go? Well, I think moving forward, I mean, we always need to keep moving forward with that technology. Mm-hmm. And at that conference I was at this week, there were several presentations on AI, facial recognition, cameras, um, Mm -hmm. microchip uh, chips. Mm -hmm. And I think that is, it's good for the players. So right now, when you you bet into a slot machine, you get a true idea of what your play is and what your play is worth. On a table game, there's still a lot of guessing involved. You know, you have supervisors spread out over one, two, four, six, ten games in some casinos. And your average bet is one component on how casinos reinvest in you. And if they're not getting that average bet correctly, you might be under reinvested in or over reinvested in. Mm-hmm. Another metric that we use is what the house advantage of the game is. Well, if right. the game has one bet, it has one house advantage. But a game like craps, there, there's 10 bets on it with a, a wide range of house advantage. Mm-hmm. So a player that's playing the pass line with full odds mm-hmm. is getting rated. And then a player that's playing place bets, hard ways, prop bets, and they both have a $100 average, Realistically, one player should be getting a lot more credit for what he's playing than the other one is. Right. And that's really impossible with the current systems yep. and, and human error involved. Mm-hmm. So you bring in chips with RFID, you bring in cameras, you bring in um, optics. All of those things, I think, are better for both the customer and the casino. I, I agree. I, 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 I've had not too long ago, we had a customer who came in here and, and liked being in here and talked about won't go into a regular casino or hasn't been in a regular casino because he doesn't like being on camera. And, uh, and by the way, uh, yeah, you're, on you, you're, on, you're on camera here. You're on camera everywhere you go yeah. nowadays. And I was like, dude, you're on camera here. He's like, yeah, but you don't, you don't use it for anything. Well, sort of. You start stealing. We're going to yeah. have to use it, right? Um, do you, do you remember getting the camera talk when you first broke in? Like, you know, I walk in and oh. say, like, you're on camera all the time, so don't get caught picking your nose or yeah, 100%. On the, or whatever you're yeah. doing. And you just, you know, your first couple of weeks, you're just, you know, kind of looking up, yeah. like, what do they see me doing? And then mm-hmm. eventually you just forget about it. Yeah, you desensitize. Yeah. I know I know a lot of new dealers that come to the school, they think that that, 
they'll get nervous, you know, being under the camera. But you're really not under the camera. So once you get through a shift of dealing, a couple yeah. shifts or a week, you really, you kind of forget about the supervisors because there, there are a lot of eyes on you, yeah. right? I mean, more eyes on you in a proactive way than almost any other job. Maybe a banker has yeah. a lot of eyes on them. Uh, but but it, it becomes background. It just yeah. it goes in the background. Next thing you know, you're just dealing. It's not even a big deal. Even for high limit, even the high limit people, you know, you have some presence. For but, me, again, I want ease of use. So do I want to carry around 27 players' cards and have to give it every time I come up? Mm -hmm. You know, if I can come up and sit down and get my chips and I automatically get populated into the system and I get credit for my play that way, I don't have to worry about saying, hey, did you – I, I just made a really big bet here. Did you get that? Did you get that? So that I can get credit. Yeah. And it all happens seamlessly. I, I think that's a better experience for everybody. Hundred percent. If, if you don't want to be seen, maybe. Yeah. You don't go in a casino. Where you, uh, yeah. And casinos can see. They can literally see everything. When when I first uh, broke in, you know, camera angles a little limited, black and white. They didn't have the same optics. Now they can literally see. We had to ask my first casino. Uh -huh. We had a big player had a giant pinky ring with a giant diamond, uh. and it was refracting the light so much <laughs> that it uh, yeah. blocked out the whole table. And they had to ask him to take it off. Yeah, no, and and you were you were limited to like you know, if um, your hands had to be clear. Yeah. You know, nowadays we actually had a dealer that got hired with tattoos on their hands because they could the camera can see it's not a chip. But it used to be at any tattoos on your on your on your face, your hands, there was just no chance. Yeah, no no chance. Oh yeah, game. anybody that's gone to do a surveillance review even ten years ago, much less twenty, thirty years ago. Yeah. You you were you were shooting a you know, you don't know what you're looking at on yeah. those cameras. Yeah, hundred percent. Uh okay, so we I know we talked a little bit about I I guess I think your phone, your watch, I pay for things. I you know with yeah. my watch, uh, you know, I go up Apple Pay. It's Samsung Pay, but Apple Pay. I, you know, I can I can see that being part of the experience, like the player card. Instead of having all the cards here, here's my digital yeah. ID. You know, plug me in. You know, we, we tell people before you leave the game to ask what your rating is because it can fluctuate, yeah. uh, especially if you play dice. Yeah. It's easier to get rated on a crack. I mean, a blackjack table, baccarat. But when you go to dice, depending upon how you play. Yeah. And you'll be disappointed, by the way, if you're taking those full odds. You don't get a lot of credit for odds, by well, the yeah, way. You get no credit for yeah. them in most so, jurisdictions. In most jurisdictions. No, no mathematical advantage for you. It gets players, a little depressing, so, yeah. especially if you're at a 10 times odds or a 100 times odds house, and you got, you know, 5 and 500. You're a $5 player. <laughs> it's a, so, well, okay. So, and, and I think that's good. If, if, you're, if you're digital, if, you know, throughout the casino, the, the nice thing I've seen a lot of casinos do is they give you credit for everything you do in the casino because it's yeah. an integrated resort. You go eat a dinner, ridiculously expensive dinner. You go, you go see a Celine, a Celine Dion show. Those tickets aren't cheap. Yeah. But you get credit for everything. It's all part of why you're at. It used to be only gaming. Yeah. Only gaming got you the host and the, you know, the rooms and things like that. But now everything. Yeah, and as it should be. In any dollar spent is, is a valuable dollar. We're, we're all mm -hmm. fighting for customers and fighting to generate that revenue. So you should get credit for that. You know, is, is, is the guy that goes to the nightclub and, and spends $20,000 on bottles any less valuable than the guy that gambles $20,000? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. My next Patreon story is going to be my... Uh my Dre's ex my bottle experience. Holy crap, are those bottles expensive? Oh, I've, I've got some stories about oh, that. I, <laughs> I, you, I, you know, I spent a few years running the pits out at XS and uh, oh my god, be, and surrender. So. Oh my god, I so, mean, just to sit down, dude. You go there expecting a seat. No, no, you no. got to pay for yeah, seats, yeah. dude. Seats come with a cost, dude. Otherwise, you got to stand. All right, um, I guess we do that. So, uh, interestingly, and this is something, believe it or not, the very first conversation I had with this was with you. And this is kind of the innovative conversations that you have. But, um, you know, if you're in a casino, why do you have to be at the table? Good point. You could be playing from inside your room. They already have Kino in the room, sir. Just yeah. so you know, you can play Kino from your room. <laughs> well, I think, and, and, and you see it when you, when you talk about online gambling. There's, there's a warehouse full of dealers dealing somewhere in Europe or the islands or wherever they are. Mm -hmm. And you're able to play online. There's no reason why you can't have that same experience, you know, sitting in a lounge and you hear the roar of the dice or the, you know, you see 10 red in a row on a roulette table. Why can't I just log in real quick while I'm sitting over here comfortably chatting with you and, and place a bet on that game? Whether it's geolocating it into the casino or, or however that technology works, mm -hmm. I think it's additive and it's something the gaming industry needs to look forward to is, you know, one of the things I tell my vendors is, Get me another bet or, or save me some labor. You know, that that's where we're going forward. And 
be, the ability to bet digitally while not sitting at the table but still in the box, in I, the I box. think is 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 additive to come to the pit, know. pick up a tablet, yeah, take it to the lounge, and that tablet could be connected to a game, a craps table, whatever the case is, and just play that tablet is the game. It's the live virtually rendered game. Well, we're already doing it with ETGs, right? It's yeah. except for it's on a terminal. It, it's that's just it. a giant tablet that's fixed to the floor. Yeah. Being able to figure out uh, the ins and outs and I, I'm I'm not an IT guy, but mm -hmm. that ability to play that ETG from the restaurant, from mm -hmm. you know, the lounge, from my room. Now you see why I have him on the show, right? I mean, that's an easy win. It's amazing because, uh, I mean, ever since I had that conversation with you some time ago, uh, we were on a casino floor. I've, I've heard it, but just sort of the hints of, you know, how we can play technology. We actually have someone who developed uh, Crapsy and has looked at, you know, having this kinds of, uh, you know, this kind of te technology where, where people can be obviously geolocated yeah. uh, and play like, you know, what does it matter? Like you have uh, 12 positions, you could have 100 positions on one live craps table yeah. as long as it's done correctly. And the, and the technology exists, of course, there are some, all right. Uh, do we have any questions before we get to the second part? Because we're going to go virtual. Oh, okay. Oh, well, we have think? actually tons of super chats and stuff, so. We have, we have t t super chats? Super duper. What uh, do we got? Derek is going to oh, start God. out with, I got Hi, my, Derek. gave us five bucks, said, Got my Taiki outfit. It happens to be a cutout of David. <laughs> Ooh. What a little bastard. We don't like him. Uh, he still owes me dinner, but we still don't like him. We'll <laughs> like him when he pays for dinner, and then we'll think about it, go from there. Is it like a cardboard cutout that he's going to carry oh, around with him and have his it. arm around? Yeah, 100%. And... That'll be, by the way, that's you being tacky, not me, sir, okay? Uh, unless anybody thinks it's actually me, which I can see that being a thing. Snapper, get some better glasses, will you, buddy? <laughs> 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 All right, what do you got? Uh, Christopher Burr Trucking said, they need your uh, date of birth for Daddy David's 75th and over Kino event. <laughs> Listen, uh, I just have one really quick story. It's only going to take two minutes, okay? And less than two minutes. I just have one question for Dennis. Dennis, I, I, how I many minutes fifth. did it take I, you to I played the fifth. I, uh, so so I the day the after fifth. Dennis's birthday, uh, he sat down. $100 uh, next to me for the very first time. Went to his first Dottie, sir. First Ooh. Dotties. You never forget your first time with Dotties. Because <laughs> you need a penicillin shot after <laughs> It's all urgent care, the oxygen tank, get the smoke out of your uh, clothes. I, I, I kid. Dotties is fantastic. Yeah. We, You know, I, I will say this. It gets sometimes going to a casino is difficult, especially if, this, if where I play Kino is near the tables. Yeah. Because uh, I either have dealers or fans. Uh, it, it's the strangest you, thing. You, uh, you, you've entered that level of strata that I you mean, have to worry about the paparazzi. So we, and the, we've uh, gone to craft pits and like the craft table. You know, oh my god, <laughs> yeah, yeah, a little bit. I mean, not always. Some people are like, huh? I, I it, like we have people who like I've seen you, but I'm not really sure where. You know, it could have been that Cottonelle commercial. Might have been a dice. Uh, cha anyways. But so, I mean, for me, it's just safe. If I want some time, the nice thing about dive, this one dive where I go, there's a machine right by the door, and the U1 machines have, like, a little enclosure, yeah. and I could be my little secret self. But uh, so within a minute of him playing, I marked his numbers, dude. I put the money in. I marked his numbers. He sat there just pressing play, and boom. How much did you win, buddy? Let him know what you won. I, I told you I played And the how fifth. old are you I, uh, again? I what know. kind of hair are we talking about? Oh, my God. Winner. Let's just say it was a winner. And he's pleading the, the fifth against self-incrimination, just so you know, okay? All right, what else do we got? So thank you so much, Christopher. Uh, that's one of our smartest viewers, um, unlike Derek. But uh, Christopher Bird, smart. He's actually corrected me a few times. He's well-informed, dude. Uh, All right, Ryan else Chris just gave us five bucks, didn't say anything. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. Derek Silva. I get a split on this, right? Appearance fee? <laughs> well, we got bills, dude. Bills, bills. Um, <laughs> Derek Silva with another five dollars. Yes, hi Derek. Said, when is Anna Barhar coming to a casino? Oh, God, I know he gets this a lot. <laughs> never. So, can, the can, third never? Thursday from never. <laughs> Do you think a game like? But it's so simple. That's why it's so fun. 
It, it, it's so it's so it, I I've actually enjoyed playing it online. It's not a it's not a star, right? Because the, <laughs> the shame in his face right now. I know he's like, why are you asking me this? Why are you we've asking been, me this? We've been down this road before. We, you we think, have. Do you think a game like that just dead in the water can't make? I think it's you know you have to worry about educating the customers, yeah. which is a lot easier to do online, right? You guys go on, you already have a a, a captive audience, yeah, and then you, you make it fun. Yeah, you throw something like that on a casino floor anywhere, and First, you have to get people to come up to it. Then you have to explain it to them. Then you have to get them to buy in and play it. It's very difficult for new games to hit the market. And That's I was true. very much in my career a proponent of that. I had games at different casinos where I said, hey, I'll reserve this game. Let's put a new game on. Let's give it a shot. I'm, I'm all about trying new things. Mm -hmm. You know, swing for it. You know, you never know what the next big hit is. And if you never take a chance, you're never going to get that big hit. Um, at that conference I was at, they had a best new table games uh, contest. And there were, you know, ten or twelve different new games, mm -hmm. and they they're they're great, and these guys do a great job putting them together. It's getting them on the floor and educating that customer and getting them to sit down is the hard part. It is. It's tough. I I've actually I've opened a few casinos, and I remember one of the casinos I opened. We went through this whole review process. So they were they were trying to take local applicants who are interested in being part of the casino experience, a brand new market, and uh, not a single not a single one of those presentations made on the floor. Yeah. Uh, it went all classic. Uh, I think Let It Ride was the only actually new game at the time. That's how far back I was in this casino. It was the advent of Let It Ride and the Shuffle, Shuffle Master. Yeah. Uh, the automatic shuffler. Uh, you know what? I, I, I will pause. I'm going to do a quick shout out for a game that we have been uh, demoing. Uh, and uh, I, I'm going to say this because this could be the first real public mention, but uh, we, we've had some uh, Big Pineapple. Uh, we, we have this game. It's called Big Pineapple. And it, uh, it fulfills sort of the 15 second learning curve, done. Okay. 15 second learning curve, it uses all existing equipment. Me and Alex have played it now a dozen times and it's ass and seat type of game. So it's, it's actually very engaging. It plays like Ultimate Texas Hold'em. It just has this added bonus. So it, it creates another level of engagement. I think it has a shot of, of and I've, I've seen probably hundreds of these games. Uh, and the most disappointing one was, was all of the, you should see the looks on these inventors' faces. You know, the people that invent the games, especially the really, the ones where they have like all different chips and different cards and, yeah. and they bring this whole production and then you look at them and you're like, you know right away, no casino is going to invest in this. I, I saw one this week and uh, I'll, I'll leave the names out to protect the innocent. Yeah. It, it had a shoe where you dealt three cards to the players mm. and then it had another shoe oh. where you pulled out three cards and there were rules on the cards ah. and it would be <laughs> like, you lose... Your yeah. club, you lose your highest card, you lose this, and I was like, like I understand the creativity and I can appreciate that, and I know you worked hard on it. Mm -hmm. It's slow, it's complicated, and it, mm -hmm. it needs to be additive, yeah. right? Any game that gets on the floor, is it just going to take away from my current three card poker players, mm -hmm. or my current Ultimate Texas, or my current Blackjack players, or is it going to bring me a new customer? You know, that's what the poker variants did. It brought new customers to table games that liked mm -hmm. poker but didn't have the time to sit at a poker table or they weren't accessible. That's it. So what, whatever can bring new customers and not just cannibalize your current existing customers. Yeah, so we'll, we'll see. Big Pineapple, I, I'm, I'm looking after you, you guys here? a little bit. Uh, we don't have it in the layup, but uh, I'll show it to you. Yeah, I'd love to look at it. Uh, I, out of literally the 300, I actually did an intro for them because they were entering their video to, to an executive who was part of this convention. Okay. And so we did a forward for them. And the only reason I, and I did it free, free of charge, because quite literally in my career, it's the first game I've ever seen that has a shot and a small shot, because I know how hard it is. Very, very few of these games transfer. And, and unless you have a really big uh, casino licensee behind you, yeah. it's very hard to get on the floor. Uh, except at the Mirage, we'll do a 90-day trial of almost any game ever invented, <laughs> as long as you pay. As long I, as you pay. As long as you pay. They're like, sure, bring it on. Is you know, if you pay everything, we're good. What do we care? You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Um, all right. So let's go to. Uh, I let's still have a couple questions. Oh, we still have a few. Okay, go. Uh, Greg says, "Would a casino buy me uh, an Indian casino? Hire someone for summer work." 100 percent. Uh, casinos are so so. Uh, casinos are desperate for employees now. It's amazing. They're they're literally walking all over themselves. We get calls from five to ten casinos every week, and the number of emails I've gotten from quite literally all over the country. I I know I quite literally know of pits here in Vegas that are at risk of shutting down for lack of staff. Yeah, 
literally. It's, you know, and I think it, it's a little bit of a branding message. I think we need to get the word out that being a, uh, being a dealer is a skilled tradesman. It's no different than being a plumber, an electrician. You're learning a craft, you're learning a trade, a skill that you have to go through and then applying it. And then you have the ability to go anywhere in the country. You have the ability to move up from a $30,000 a year job to a $100,000 a year job. It, you know, I can't think of a, and limited, right? Third grade education, count to 21. Yeah, you don't need a lot. The bar is low, sir. You gotta literally be able to stand up and <laughs> but move you, some But you can cards. really, you can change your lot in life. You know, if, if you're working in, in, you know, there's lots of talk nowadays, the talking heads on, on the new, major news media is, you know, people can't live off a minimum wage or people need to be paid a living wage. You can get paid a living wage in a casino being a dealer. Yep. And dealer, by the way, leads to lots of other opportunities. Casinos are famous for promoting within. Absolutely. I know a lot of dealers who've never been to college that are table game directors now. Yeah. Or they've, I know I know someone who moved on to an accounting field, actually went through a, a network casino that here in town uh, and started as a dealer. They paid for them to go to college to become a CPA inside their casino. Casinos are huge organizations. Mm -hmm. They have accounting departments, finance departments, food and beverage departments, mm -hmm. security departments. And if you do a good job, casinos are great about promoting from within because you, we're, we're spending time, energy to train you. You're gaining this knowledge that you need and you can move up. And that's one of the things, especially table games, I love the layers of it. It's dealer to dual rate to floor to dual rate pit to pit to backup shift to assistant shift to shift to director. Like there's lots of opportunity to grow in your career where there's some jobs where it's you're, you're either here or yeah. The momentum is limited. Yeah. You know what I mean? The box is tight. Uh, yes. Yeah, so the other question I get a lot, by the way, is we, we have, I know we have a lot of fans all over the world, all over the country. So one of the things we're putting together is we're creating a, another online academy that'll be directly connected and licensed and state licensed with CEG. So that's coming soon. So we'll have those classes. We'll be able to virtualize the experience as much as possible. Um, and the the other thing is like I, I I get so many emails from people who are like, well, if I come to CEG, can I get hired at my local casino, a la Chicago? By the way, this is a shout out to that that young man who's reached out to me a couple of times. And let me make it very simple. Yes, hundred uh, percent. We teach you all the basics. Now there might be some nuances, different different jurisdictions, different bosses. So, you know, they you might not have to pitch. You might be dealing out of shoe your the rest of your life. You may never see a pitch game like they have here in Vegas. Uh, or that you might be a face-up game, you know, or, you know, there, so there are nuances. A lot, a lot of uh, casino managers will come in and, and they'll change some, some kinds of things, how you pull money out of the rack, how you pay insurance. All, all that's trainable. Uh, you that's know, it. an experienced casino manager who's going to give you your audition is going to see that. They're going to want to see personality, mm -hmm. how your hands work, how your hands move. The rest is policies and procedures that can be taught to you. Yep, so come to CEG, learn from experience. We do a fantastic job, and uh, we could send you. And we have those relationships. Uh, we we have those relationships. Not not all of them directly, but we've been called by many of the Indian tribes. Reach out to us for dealers, asking us if we have anybody on the way to Florida or Oklahoma or wherever. Not always the case, but yes. Yeah, so come down to see. All right, what else do we have? Well, we have Robert Barnes. Give us twenty dollars. Uh, thank you, sir. So see you all next week. Will I'll be the? Will there be a podcast next week? I might have to say hello. 100%. By the way, we have the purple couch uh, for our VIPs, of which uh, Mr. B is one. Mr. B's been with us, I think, The casting as long. couch, by the way. I, that's what I was about to say. Is uh, that the casting well, couch? it's a bit short, sir. Not everybody's going to fit. <laughs> it's a little mini mini casting couch. So if you're under four feet, maybe, it might work out for you. Uh, what do you think, Dennis? Mm -hmm. uh, I played the fifth. Uh, <laughs> oh, God. Another two. fifth? What's going on after hours, dude? I gotta take that key back. Uh, <laughs> CEG after hours yeah, on the purple you, couch. Can you imagine? We were gonna have an after hours show that was gonna lead to uh, a walk. Uh, but unfortunately, we have a lot of lazy gamblers. <laughs> they just wanna gamble. They don't wanna waste too much energy before or after. All right, what else you got? Any more questions? Uh, I have a couple more. I'm gonna try to go through them All quickly. right, go ahead, because we gotta uh, get to the e-gaming. Alan Toy asked uh, two questions. Number Is one. Is the check on the way? Yes. Well, he, he was asking, how's the coin sales going? Uh, so Alan, it's a, it's a whole process, bro. It's uh, we have so Alan was instrumental in us getting these collectible limited edition coins. Uh, we've inventoried them all, and we have them all in uh, seals. So the plastic capsules were all crap, uh, and we made sure none of these have been touched by hands. 
Uh, and so we've, uh, and now we've inventoried them and we've priced them and good job, buddy. Uh, it looks like we'll, uh, you know, it, 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 it was definitely well worth that. Alan, by the way, is one of our original fans by far. Go ahead, buddy. What else you got? And then his second question is, will CQ Hotel and Casino allow phones at the table? <sighs> the CQ Hotel and Casino. Yeah. That that's the dream. That is the dream. You know, interestingly, um, we are going through a build out. Uh, we are expecting to have two more locations by the first quarter of 2023. Very exciting. We grew 800 percent thanks to you guys uh, from year over year from obviously before COVID. So, uh, but we we're up about 300 percent now. So things are moving forward. We've been able to expand our staff and create opportunities for the people that are here. Everyone's growing with us. Uh, and also thanks to you, we've created some new, some wonderful opportunities for new dealers, students that are coming to the school. We've managed to keep our prices inflation friendly. So if you wonder, by the way, if you go to CEG and you wonder why the prices are affordable, uh, that's thanks to our fans, quite literally. So we have our Path Up Initiative program and we've used that money to keep our, our prices you know, lower uh, while still paying everybody a living wage uh, or well beyond a living wage. So there's that. That's why that's why we have some really great teachers that have been in this business for a very long time. And that's our small innovation to this this business. And uh, now we are we are in talks. We're working with some ca uh, uh, casinos here in town to help sort of evolve that program, create the pipeline, all that stuff. But anyways, all right, what else you got? Christopher Burt says, serious question. Thought on all the buying and selling of casinos between Hard Rock, Caesars, MGM, good thing or a bad thing? Uh, I'm gonna let I'm gonna let you take that, and then I have an answer for that too. What do you think? I think competition in any aspect of life is good. Yep. So, the more competition there is, the more innovation there will be, the more opportunities for the consumer to get what they want and get value. So I, I think it's a great thing. Not only that we are getting more competition in this market, but uh, tribes are moving in on it. Which I, my first casino was a tribal casino. And you know that's 23 years ago, and and the talk was back then. You know, originally it was, hey, the tribes are going to have casinos to really help them, you know, move forward and get get out of poverty problems that they were having on the reservation. And it, it's starting that dream starting to be realized because now these tribes have turned themselves into multinational conglomerates, which is ultimately helping their 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 people, their tribe. Yeah. So I think I, I think competition is great, and I think it's great that the tribes are entering the market. Yeah, 100%, I totally agree. Uh, we went from having like a four or five major operators to having, you know, dozen, even on the strip, new operators, Indian Casino. Palms, of course, has a, has a new operator, Indian Tribe. Uh, we Mirage now, Indian Tribe. As much as we don't like the volcano, I, I, still, I still love the idea that there's more operators. I think it'll give people a lot more value. There'll be more competition yeah. to, to earn that consumer. And we, you know, we'll we'll see a return to uh, you know some of the promotions that we uh, you know some players have missed, you know. Yeah. Uh, especially once everybody you know stops losing their money, gambling all their money away. Uh, but uh, well, it's also it, it's just a different perspective, right? It, when yeah. when you have one, two, three major companies, they're going to be doing things all the same way throughout their their brand. Now you get different people in with different ideas, and that moving forward, that innovation is 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 great for the whole industry. It's quite incredible, by the way, what's happened to Vegas. In just the last couple of years, went to all these, you know, uh, several monopolies to now, you know, look at look at Virgin, yeah, uh, you know, Mirage. Uh, we have two, there'll be two more op Resorts World, yeah, uh, right across the street. There's two more operators. It looks like that. Well, we're not really sure. So Fontainebleau Blue is a thing, by the way. You can see the construction going on a daily burst, uh, basis. The uh, the Harmon and Co not Harmon and Koval Harmon and Koval sold to F one uh, Formula One yeah, racing. Yeah, that's where the pits are going to be. That's so they're going to be exciting. developing experience there. We're going to love that. I'm not sure I'm all that excited about a baseball stadium. Quite oh, literally on the so street. So But I mean, not right on the. How, where is everybody going to park? Yeah, we'll figure out. Some, we'll figure some, e e Elon Musk will figure out a tunnel. Uh, for us. Some new um, tunnel. By the way, love the tunnel. I think you know on on that baseball. 81 dates in the summer when we're usually slower. I think it's just another opportunity to bring more people to Vegas and experience what we have to offer. Mm -hmm. And that level of entertainment experience that we're great at providing, mm -hmm. whatever brings people here, I think is, is great for us. No, I agree, I agree. I mean, the more, I, it's amazing that we have all these uh, professional sports teams oh, now. From, just that, from, just from, like that. From none forever to, to like to, all of them. We are the, the worldwide leader in uh, sports entertainment. That's it, I mean, it, it's happening. All right, so with that said, do you think that the Strip is gonna have a, um, 
Because originally Wynn had this idea to put a roof, to make it like Fremont, put a roof and no cars around this. Do you think it's ever going to happen? You know, I, 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 not a structural engineer, but I would imagine <laughs> that it would be difficult because a lot of the entrances for, for taxis, limos, shuttles are on the strip. Yeah. So I'm, I'm not sure how that's possible, but... You know, again, if, if somebody figures it out and it's better for the city, I'm, I'm all for it. Yeah, 100 percent. So I, I'm a big fan of the tunnel thing. I've, I've seen all these different articles about how it could be dangerous, things like that. I suppose being in a tunnel anywhere could be dangerous. Yeah. But I, I love the tunnel thing. I, I love that. I love that a private company came to Vegas and just made that solve. You know, one of the things I, I worked in politics for a number of years at a fairly high level in politics as as a logistics that support and a data. Lot. I know <laughs> it really does. So uh, but it was always so frustrating to see so many short sighted politicians just clamoring for votes instead of looking at long term solutions yeah. for Vegas as a valley. I mean, do you know that decades ago they planned for Vegas to have it's some something like in 2010 to have only 800,000 people, and they yeah. built our infrastructure around that. Meanwhile, we're at two million yeah. at that point, and that's really where we're at. So we keep reinvesting in RTD instead of some type of light rail. Even though, even though, so we have hired, spent millions of dollars at both parties, Republican Party and the Dem, all the parties. They've we've spent millions of dollars in in these cons hiring consultants to look at these long term solutions, and every time one comes down the pipe. It, it, it doesn't have any traction over some short-term budget, even though it's shown that these other solutions, and meanwhile, well, the rest of us suffer. You know, the rest of us as, as a community suffer. That's why I love the, the few things that I've loved that have happened, the evolution of Vegas, which we'll, we'll get to in a minute, but Uber came and whacked all the cab. I, don't, I, know, this, I know that's gonna, not going to be popular, but forever you couldn't get a cab if you're yeah. a local. You had to be on the strip. Yep. If you were trying to go to your grocery store, forget about it. I didn't have a car for a long time. I was always too busy losing my money on the strip. So I couldn't afford a car. It was very frustrating, and you just couldn't get a cab here until Uber. And then they all, you know, moaned and, and bitched about it, which I understand. But come on. And then ultimately, Elon Musk well, came. Good. The, the, the cab. That that's the reason why the monorail doesn't go to the airport, right? Because yeah. the the, the ca taxi cabs were, you know, they had a union or and a yep. political donations and said, hey, we this is our our piece of the pie. And don't, don't get me started on politics. You know, my, mm -hmm. my girlfriend, my friends will tell you that that's my favorite yeah. topic. Oh, really? <laughs> I, I wanted to be governor of Wisconsin when I was in college. Oh, so. really? Oh, wow. yeah. I was, I was no, they killed the monorail, side. dude. Of course you got to have. Monorail's got to go. I mean, if, are you going to pay back that? How do you not have the monorail go to the airport in Las Vegas? It makes no sense. That's yeah. a, that's a That was a dead of the water. I mean, and, and they're like, well, we're going to put it off. Eventually, we're going to do that. Yeah. No, no, of course not eventually because the yeah. political will is going to die. Yeah. you got to strike by that. You know, all these years we've been trying to get a bullet train. That's what we're going to get too late. Okay, so here, before I get on that rant, just know... Hyperloop. Uh, yeah, the Hyperloop. Uh, okay, so what uh, What else? Do we have anything else before I can go on to the e-gaming part of this yeah, uh, equation? Yeah. Please, please, please try to keep you know the answer shorter over there. Oh, God, yeah, that's my problem. Uh, Skill and Lux says, what are the table minimums at the Strat right now? Uh, mostly 10 and 15, believe it or not. Uh, action at the Strat is not, <laughs> is not subdued. Uh, it's uh, pretty busy. I know... Um, uh, I'm not even sure if they have the $5 games. Do they have any $5 games? You know what? I haven't been in a while. Obviously, I, I left yeah. there last year. Um, it was always our policy. Um, you know, if the, if the games were dead, if it was slow on Graveyard or whatever, we, we would go down that low. But it, it's a supply and demand thing, as it is anywhere else. If, if you can have $15 and $25 tables full, you know, why would you have a $5 table? But yeah. the, the team there does a really good job of what's called yield management, which is moving up with the the level of customers. So if you have customers betting big, you move the limits up. If you have a lot of customers around, you move the limits mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. But it, it's still a pretty um, reasonable mm -hmm. versus yeah. center strip. Yeah, you'll see you'll see the ten dollar tables there. Be, you know what I mean? Before you'll see ten dollar tables center strip. That's yeah. for sure. But we on the weekends especially we haven't seen a lot of we us personally. Although I think Ronnie may be able to give you a better update on that because I'm not I'm not in there all the time so. All right, what else? Reiner asks, uh, has there been any uh, movement on raising the W2G limits? Oh, that's a great question. It's yeah. been in the news and it's yeah. in front of Congress. It, it would be it would be great if they were able to do that because, you know, that limit was set in what, 74, I believe. Yeah. Completely. So. And I think 10k, right? No, I think 5k is 5K. what they're looking at. Okay, is, is, 5k. Is the numbers that I've heard, but, but still it seems They much they've been talking about that for for my entire time in the business getting that raised. So. Yeah. It seems like there might be a little bit of traction again because of COVID. You know, we we moved some things around. How many employees it took 
to, to pay a jackpot just to keep people physically distanced. But it, I think it would be a great thing for the business. It would be better for the guest experience if, if that level was moved. No, I agree 100%. I, it's such an arbitrary thing. All right. Next Go ahead. question is, how's the vibe around the industry about the MGM taking over the Cosmo? No. Uh, can I? You know what? I'll answer that directly because we have a few people that work at the Cosmo. They're nervous. Uh, in the past, MGM has come in and reset a few things. And so, you know, people that have worked there have vacation time accrued and benefits. And, and you don't want a company to come in and say, hey, day one employees now and kind of reset the clock. I don't think that's going to happen. In terms of how they're going to change the dynamic, me personally, and based on the, the some of the people that we know, why would you change a hit? Like, why would you do anything adverse to that property? You know, we had heard rumors of them trying to move some of those high-end Cosmo people over to Aria, but uh, it, Cosmo is a unique experience. Yeah. You, you can maybe move people from like high-end, you know, Luxor and, and Manly Bay and, and try to like get them to an Aria or Bellagio type of thing, but the Cosmo is, it's really, it, it has a very specific crowd. It, it's built up a very unique experience. And, and I think people that go there just aren't about to be moved over uh you know me personally what are your thoughts uh you know i think mgm has obviously been a great operator for a very long time mm -hmm. so it's hard to second guess what they're doing mm -hmm. and change is always scary for everybody mm -hmm. but change isn't always bad so mm -hmm. yeah it, it's you know I, there there's thousands of people that work for mgm and and they wouldn't work anywhere else they're extremely happy there yeah. so my expectation was if i was in their shoes it would just be a a wait and see and say, hey, you know, the grass isn't always greener and change isn't always bad. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, just kind of trust in the process. And like we talked earlier, the great thing about a dealer right now or a supervisor is you're in demand. You can, if, if you don't mm -hmm. like what is happening, you can readily get another job, you know, at a, at a comparable property, I'm sure. Yeah, 100%. I, I really, and, and I think as, as much as people might have been nervous originally, I don't think that's that's no longer a case because everything has sort of just evolved naturally. Uh, Cosmo dealers are still making fantastic money. I hear about it constantly. They're really doing, very, <laughs> having a wonderful experience. They, they love to tell you about it. No, they? that's for sure. Especially, David, number one job. You know, because there's been this competition, Cosmo, Aria. You know, there's a lot of uh, casinos now that have done really, MGM. MGM has done the original MGM Grand has really moved ahead in in the money uh, in the money realm too. Well, I think that that's the other thing that I don't think we talked about when we talk about table minimums going up and mm -hmm. you know is that squeezing some players out? But what it is doing is, you know, the more the the higher the bet is, the more likely the tip is going to be a little bit bigger as well. So I think money is up across the board. Everybody I talk to, which which is great when you talk about a living wage, this mm -hmm. is more money in the pockets of of hardworking mm -hmm. Las Vegas people. I agree. You know, th just like two days ago, there was a story that ran on a local TV station about how tipping is down in other places in the country and how someone here in Vegas was nervous about it. And again, it, it's like fake news. Uh, that's not even a thing. So like, I, I will tell you quite honestly, every property that I know of, every casino that I know of, tips for the most part are up. <clears throat> just know that this time of year, tips can be down because yeah. it's a slower it's time seasonal. of year. It's seasonal. Uh, but in general, tips have been up across the board. I don't know where they they, they lured this one person. Hey, dude, come on over here. We got a story we want to develop. You know what I mean? It, it's the strangest thing because I haven't heard that said from a single person. Well, again, it, it's you're tipping for the experience you get. And mm -hmm. I think we do a better job here than most places at providing that experience. So the dealers here are probably going to be tipped better than, mm -hmm. than a local jurisdiction. So, you know, you, you get what you put into it. All right, what else do we got? By the way, do you want a drink or water or something? Yeah, water would be yeah. phenomenal. Can we get him? Can we get this young man? What, what kind of? What kind of? I know. What uh, kind of? I, mean, I realize I'll, we got we got nothing. I'll get, in the a, cup. I'll get him a water right after we ask these two questions. All right, two questions. Off. We got cold water uh, for you. Dude. Watermelon. Ask, watermelon. How's the cod shortage going? How the which one? The cod shortage. Well, let's just say, uh, yeah. The so what? we have this running thing, by the way. It, strangely enough, I had seen this uh, news uh, news uh, program, and it was right before we were filming roulette. So we were filming roulette at the school, and Alex asked me, hey, what's going on with you? And I'm like, well, I'm worried about the cod shortage. Cod, like cod the I know, you're cod? not going to get Yes, <laughs> I know. It's gonna I, take I, I thought this was your Boston accent talking no. about card shortage. No, I'm no, like, cod shortage, sir, okay? Not cards. Jeez, Louise. Um, oh. so, 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 listen. You get to a certain age, and all the intangibles become tangibles, and you know the mind does not work as fluidly <laughs> as we would like. 
And it, it just caught me off guard because it happened to be the first thing that came to mind is like all these poor fish and chip places in 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 England. We we have a fan of ours that's been with us forever, Patty, and he lives in England. And I can just see Patty and his wife exiting their you know whatever the hell they live in over there. Uh, Houses, and, I would assume. Uh, maybe a house, <laughs> maybe a hobbit hole. You never know what these. You know, people in other countries, what goes on. And, and they go down to the local fish and chips places, and there's no fish. There's only chips because there's no cod. Apparently, they use cod. Anyways, that's what that's. What, I ate <laughs> cod for 90 straight days to win a bet once. Whoa, really? Yeah. Wow. Cod and salad for 90 See? days. Lost 54 pounds in 90 days. <laughs> and all <laughs> I, I ate was cod. And I'll never eat it. another piece of cod. Oh, wow. But I go to the store every day, and there's, like, so much cod. I'm like, maybe I should just get a hold of this cod, send it, send it to it. Patty, and he can distribute it to all his fish and chips. So, so unlike, so here in the United States, we have Taco Bells every, on every corner, right, Dennis? Taco Bells every quarter. I don't know you. Yeah, that's another little inside. So we have a lot of Taco Bells, McDonald's, these kinds of things. But in apparently in England, they got a fish and chip place every couple blocks. You got to, you know, you stop in, get some fish and chips, and they got the blood brownie things going on. A lot of different things going on over there, dude. They 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 use the like the blood and oof, God. Anyways. Um, so now they're out of cod. There's a cod shortage just in the UK, apparently. I don't know what's going it's on like with the that. Chicken wing shortage we had here. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people lost their minds, by the way. Holy crap! Have you gone to buy actual chicken wings at the store? Yeah. They're like a hundred dollars a pound now. It's unbelievable. All right, what else? Anything else? Uh, last thing. I'll save the rest of the questions for later. Okay. Alan Toys uh, gave us five dollars. Said oh. legal fund. It is the legal fund still active? Yeah, legal fund is still active. If not in use, use this for the Taco Bell Mexican Pizza Fund. See you uh, in November. That's like five Mexican pizzas. Dennis doesn't even know. Dennis, by the way, have you ever had a Mexican pizza? There's no like such a, thing as a, a Mexican real, pizza. I know. He's like, stop, he's stop, a, stop with your nonsense. But a ta- I mean a taco because they came back with them. So there is a rumor that they are not going to have, they're going to cut out the Mexican pizzas. And they're going to only make it a seasonal select item. I haven't had one of those since high school, I bet. But you remember it, though. I do remember See it. See that? It, it fondly, or do you, you know? Yeah. yeah. I was, I was oh, a God. Nachos Bel Grande guy. Oh, really? Yeah, see, but he doesn't understand Taco Bell. So let's say I live in a, I live in the far north, Las Vegas. Utah. <laughs> <laughs> it can be a little whitewashed in my ear, although not really. I live in a pretty diverse, uh, uh, believe it or not, I live in a pretty diverse. But there's a Taco Bell near me, right outside Dottie's, as a matter of fact. And... The line goes around and around and around, and sometimes I can't even get into Dottie's. I got to honk, and people got to move out of my way. Meanwhile, if you go to the Taco Bell near where Dennis used to live, never a line. Nobody in line. Nobody wanted because he lived in a very Mexican neighborhood. Mexicans just don't, don't they don't jive with the Taco Bell as much as the uh, the white folks. <clears throat> Anyways. Anyways, wow. get back to the topics. <laughs> Room temp or cold? Or cold, please. Yep. Uh, all right, so let's get to uh, let's talk about online gaming, okay? And the evolution of online gaming. So um, there's there's a lot uh, sort of being evolved. So there is augmented reality, and there's literally virtual reality with the headset. I'm not really sure what the, I I guess one you know you know kind of I don't know. Anyways, um, so what do you think about virtual reality in the online gaming space? I I have. No- nothing to say about it I, I don't know enough to comment about it like mm-hmm. obviously you know my kids have an oculus and they play games on it but yeah how it relates to gaming I, i'm not sure so thank you sir um i i um i do have a, a little bit because i i i've had some really interesting conversations with a company that deals with displays and optics and really interesting kinds of displays, interactive facial recognition displays. You wink your eye and the display does some crap and you roll your hand. And so can you imagine you, and and this is by the way, even inside the casino space. So like at any point you put on your, you know, I was gonna say your Oculus, I was gonna say binoculars, that's silly. You put on your whatever. And uh, next thing you know, you you can go, you can walk down a retail space. You can buy stuff that you interact with, you know, yeah. through your, you know, VR headset. You know, what's to say that you can't belly up to a slot machine inside that space and, you know, play a slot machine the same way you would with the same opportunities, the same pay scale. I, I think that is, you know, probably more attractive than just looking at it on a monitor and playing on, on, your, yeah. on your laptop or your tablet. I could see the lure behind that if it is that interactive. Yeah. But again, I think you can't get away from 
being in the space and, and having all of your senses being utilized, you know, the smells, the sounds, hearing it, there's, there's an energy that you can feel in a casino like being in a ballpark mm -hmm. when, when something exciting happens. Yeah. And I'm not sure you can replicate that through VR. But again, anything that is additive, if there's a segment of the population that that's how they want to experience gaming, mm -hmm. then I think we should give that to them. By the way, that just that comment resonated with a lot of people. I mean, we our our fan base is all about the entertainment, which is, you know, interestingly, we we have this. Our, our fan base is about the experience, really. I mean, there's there's there are some people who follow us for strategies, although I feel bad for you, you know, because that's you know. But the casinos but, were built on guys with strategies. Yeah, no, hundred percent. Come with the strategy. But I, but I, I, most of our, most of just love having fun. They come out here to enjoy themselves. The experience that me and Alex, Alex is not the math guy. Alex physics yeah, was Alex not his best subject. Alex is not the math guy. <laughs> and so, but, but Alex is a lot of fun. And, and if you just want to have fun and you just want to let go and enjoy yourself and not take yourself too seriously, which he doesn't. And those of you that keep posting about him being more serious, let it go. It's not going to, it's never going to happen. It's not. A you thing. are who you are at the end That's of the it. day. That's and, it. And he, he loves to embrace that. And, and why not? You know, uh, you know, I think, I think we spend so much of our lives being serious about things that are serious. You know, you come to Vegas, this is where you come uh, to let go. Oh God. Okay. So I guess the next thing is, you know, the, the biggest problem with online gaming is that a lot of it's unregulated. Uh, you can't be sure. We, we watch a game and I, I watch these, the casinos will tell you how they're, you know, regulated in some island and they're licensed by some authority and there's all these checks and balances. But we saw a roulette spin that, that Al, Alex, Alex, Alex recorded and it looked like a magnet literally came to life and moved that ball. In fact, a lot of our fan base remembers this, uh, you know, if, if you watch them on Twitch, we, we played this. I mean, what do you think? I mean, it's... Uh, do you think it's safe, not safe? Do you think we're, well, we're going to be adopting online casinos more? Well, I think if we do uh, adopt online casinos, it should be through, you know, trusted companies that have already proven themselves to run a clean game. I think throughout history, we, we've seen with, the, with what happened in poker online, oh. you know, can I cash out, can I not cash out? Is there somebody that was able to write some code and algorithm where they could see everybody's cards and, and they're taking advantage? <laughs> that happened. So, yeah, I, I would be very skeptical in, in my money, my personal money. Mm. I wouldn't be wagering unless it was with a company that I respected and trusted. And I think the, the companies in Las Vegas, uh, the tribes throughout the country, you know, and the uh, regional operators, uh, they're licensed for a reason. The, you know, those are mm -hmm. where government regulation is, has been put to work in a useful way to protect the consumer. And then you're offered a great experience that you know is on the square. 100%. They have a vested interest. I, you know, one of those other questions we have, especially people come to Casino Quest, are like, well, do casinos rig the games? They, they have no interest in rigging the we games. Have no, we have they, no reason to. We have they, math on our side. They, have, they, they win. That's why they're $4 billion entities right. right across the street resort. No one is, no one is building a $4 billion uh, casino when someone has the secret to roulette. Well, and, it, and I, you know, when we would get beefs like that, you know, and a customer would complain, mm -hmm. you know, you're cheating me. You know, I, I don't want, I have no reason to cheat you. I'm not going to risk my gaming license, which is the hardest thing to get. For a casino to be licensed in the state of Nevada, mm -hmm. they have, have you watched some of those hearings and testimonies of uh, what they have to go through to get those licenses? Yeah. Nobody's going to risk that to cheat you. There, there's no reason to. Yeah. 100% uh, agree. So, do you think that's, that's the next thing? So, when. So now casino operators, the big ones, MGM, they have a sports book now online, yeah. so you can bet esports. So a lot of them have now entered into the esports world. And the only slots they don't, they don't have wagering slots, they just have fun slots. You yeah. can sort of, you can go on their website and they might have some fun slots where you can play similar games that they have on the floor, but there's no, there's no exchange of money, you're not banking anything, there's no yeah. risk. Do you think that a company like you know, MGM or Caesars would entertain an actual online Gaming uh, absolutely, I think they would. It's already happening in some jurisdictions in the United States and then around the world. So, if you're a reputable company mm -hmm. and you can offer that product, well, mm -hmm. you know, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you expand your customer base mm -hmm. if that's something they're clamoring for? Yeah, I, I agree. So I know that, like, <clears throat> you know, when 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 Win was around, he was all about every new gambling dollar is is money in the bank for casinos in general, and he was always looking to expand the opportunities. In fact. You know, we, we as a state, we don't have a lottery. 
Uh, and I remember, I remember like you know the Sands uh, when he was alive, uh, Venetian Adelson. Adelson. He was really adamant against any sort of competitive bent, any online gaming, no lottery, none of these things to play out that would take away. He felt would take away from him having, you know, a brick and mortar, yeah. you know, casino. And you know, there's a lot of mixed views like that. In fact, you know, we I know a casino operator that tried to put Dotties that wanted to end the Dotties experience because they were taking away from they yeah. felt it would take away from the traffic to those casinos, but. I'm 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 kind of more in wins, uh, you know, box when it comes to that, you know, that ideology, that ideology that, like you, like you said earlier, every new every new gaming experience leads to a new customer, right? Vegas, and, and Vegas has continued to grow. Everybody yeah. that, like I said, they were they were scared of Atlantic City, scared of Tribal, scared of, and it continued to grow. So I think every opportunity, which is why I'm a big proponent of stuff like this, or or cameras in the casino, anything we can do to expand the reach to let people know what their option is and that this is a valuable uh, entertainment option for your your dollars. All right, we're gonna get back to, we actually talked about a few of these things, so we're kind of near, near the end, but we're gonna get to the Vegas uh, future, although we, we did actually cover uh, a bunch of this stuff. Do we have any more questions that we can uh, confront nip in the bud while we're, while we're there? Uh, this is not really a gaming question, but Robert Barnes says, with the flash floods being a thing, how would that affect the uh, Tesla tunnels? With the what being a thing? Flash floods? Flash floods. Well, the fact that we haven't had rain in quite literally forever. <laughs> flash floods yeah, has been say, a... <laughs> That one time in three years where yeah. it rains, I think we can close the tunnel for, for a few hours. I don't know. To be honest with you, again, I'm not an engineer. I'm sure they worked out the, the yeah, flash flood e issue. E Elon's pretty smart. I, yeah. I think he's he'll have it covered. Maybe a few uh, flamethrowers down there to heat yeah. it up. For <laughs> I tried to get one of those. Oh, really? Yeah. That's kind of cool. Have your own flamethrower. Uh, and then the underwear kind of threw me off. No, the booty. Oh, I, I the underwear. Yeah, the underwear. he was selling booty shorts or underwear. Uh, what was it, Dennis? It was booty shorts. Booty uh, shorts. Male booty shorts, just to be precise. Remember back, I don't know, well, you were, I don't know how old. Uh, and back in the early 70s, you know, there had a lot of kids running around with their little short shorts. That was like the thing to wear. Now they wear, you know, the, the, the long down to your knees. Now it's starting to go the other way. You look at the NBA. Some of these guys are wearing these three, four, five inch inseam shorts again. Oh, ah, see? Back to how the John exciting Stockton for me. Randy Bird days. Oh, shit. Uh, I might have to do some more more working on my ass to make that fit, to make that work out. Okay. Um, yeah, so Elon Musk, wow. All right, so let's talk about, we're going we're gonna to get back to Vegas. I think, you know, I, I, I threw on the e-gaming thing, like the genres. Yeah. One of the other questions, you know, we talked about, obviously to build an online experience is, is a lot easier. You don't have to, it's not a $4 billion property. Yeah. You need some really good programmers. And can you imagine playing like a real Monopoly game? Or a game of risk, you know, we're wagering, where th there's all these other potential, you know, money games that, that could be part of that experience where all these other niches can play out and are Bahar. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, those kinds of experience can happen in an online space yes. that, that probably aren't going to be happy, uh, aren't going to happen on, on a brick and mortar in a live casino environment, uh, given all the obstacles to being in a live casino environment. But but it's interesting. I, I think that the future, the far future, especially as you know, the technology event, quantum computers, that might make you know, you know the 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 hacking, the the safety, yeah. you know, all those sort of protocols that have to be in place to make sure that people aren't getting taken advantage of. Look what happened to poker. I mean, holy crap, yeah. was that a debacle? But somebody still, I got money in an account somewhere. In the, <laughs> really? Uh, in yeah, a lot of Costa people got Rica scared. or the Cayman Islands back in the day where you had to buy a couch and then they refund yeah. you the couch money yeah. or however that works. And they had some the really money. big names of poker yeah. behind, you know, this huge debacle, yeah. uh, sadly. And but I think that, you know, as computing gets stronger and somehow we can come to a you know, blockchain technology yeah. I think is it might be instrumental in this to make it safer where it can actually be regulated in a hundred percent because I don't want to risk transferring money and playing and not getting paid. Right. Yeah. That's my biggest concern. And, and and not being an honest game, playing in you know Serbia or somewhere. You, you don't want to ruin the experience. You yeah. want the customer to have a good experience mm -hmm. so that the the industry continues. But I but I do I am excited about the niche stuff. So I I play MMOs. Uh, I um, you know and in, within these MMOs sometimes there's a casino environment that's been like the new thing. You know anything you can like a time stamp. It could be very interesting I think to be part of that world. Uh, like SimCity with a casino, with an actual, because they SimCity has casinos where you can play virtually, not not for real money, but just in that yeah. environment, you know. 
uh, and show up with your avatar. I think it's interesting. I, I, I'm sure that somehow, some way, that will be part of the fabric, even if it's, you know, you have to do it through a VPN. Um, I'm excited to see what, what, you know, the big operators, MGM, Caesars, I'm, I'm really excited to see what, what they do with it and how they take off with it. But okay, we're going back to uh, Vegas. Uh, I had a few highlights at which we've talked about the, the, the demonopolization of yeah. Vegas has been, I think, really excited, a uh, really exciting thing for Vegas. Uh, we, the big squeeze, so let's, uh, that's another thing that people ask me about. When are the $15 tables going by? Do you think we're ever gonna get back to $5 games or lower limit games? No. Done. It, it, it's probably done. It was, you know, a loss leader, fill the tables. But I think what really is happening is, is the industry's moving forward, forward. The smarter the people get, the better the computer power gets. You start to realize, how much those seats are worth and what you're making money off of and what you're not making money off mm -hmm. of. And then just the supply and demand issue. So I don't see them going away anytime soon. But then, then again, mm -hmm. there, there's a local property down on the South Strip where you walk in and, and there's a lot of $5 tables and there's a, it's jam packed and All they, the don't, time. They, they don't appear to be hurting for money. They're not publicly traded. So we don't, we don't know what they're making, mm -hmm. but I, I imagine it's pretty good. So there, there's lots of different ways to skin the cat. Yeah, so a lot of us, uh, we won't mention, we're not going to go into the casino names, but a lot of you already know who that is. They have a lot of five. They keep it as a $5 table. They will go to $10 on the weekends when it just gets, because it's the only way to back people up, but they keep a $5 game. We're I haven't seen a 10, same. man. Yeah, They've I, had a $10 I table. I see them Always deep five. around those roulette tables and those table, yeah. tables. It's, it's quite stunning, by the way. That that family, I, I want to just say hello if you're out there. We, we've we, uh, we would love to have an event uh, at your casino. We were offered an event there. We would love to talk to you further about that in the future. So I, I think it's very interesting. We love, our, our players have a fantastic experience. Yeah. Uh, they have the yard there, which is really great food. Uh, and they, you know, they have all the, the food court and, and inexpensive beer. So back in the day, a lot of dealers used to go there after hours. They, they were famous for their barbecue chicken. And um, among other things, this is where, that's where you used to have to pay off your boxman Ooh. on table for table games. <laughs> Not that I ever did. Whoa, we never part we of we that. We don't talk about Spectre. paying off the. <laughs> uh, that was a sensitive subject. But uh, boxmen used to get their envelope one way or the other, so to speak, and yeah. you know, old Vegas worked a little differently. Um, all right. So the the other one is uh, well, here. Uh, let me ask you this: How much authority do you give as a vice president? If if you have a table games director, who has the authority to change the table limits? If somebody comes in and says, "Could I?" and there's a dead game and the pit's dead, and all the tables are $15. Who has the authority to say, let me get a $10 game? Can I get a $10 so game? So there, there's a general sense you'll talk about in meetings. This is where we want to be. This is where we want to start. But my properties that I've been a part of, mm -hmm. it was always in the supervisor's hand to make that decision. You know, I, I read a great book called It's Your Ship, and it's all about empowering your staff to make decisions. Mm -hmm. And in that book, it was taking the the worst ship in the Navy to the best ship in the Navy. And, and that captain's advice was, if it doesn't cost the taxpayers money or it doesn't threaten somebody's life, make the decision. And that, that's how I have always run the casinos I've been a part of. It's, it's make a decision and, right. and go forward. So most places, the floor supervisors have a range of what they can do um, on the minimums. And it's, you know, capture the business is always what I tell them. So if, if you have multiple dead tables and they're 15 and somebody asks to play 10, my answer would be leave the sign 15 and let them play 10. Yeah, no, 100%. That's and awesome. And it, it just never That's hurts to ask. You know, worst thing they can do is say no. And, you know, I, I've been in properties where they've said no. I, I always tell our customers, listen, ask. You can walk up to this isn't, and nothing is written in stone. Even the table maximums, you can talk about going higher. Just the other day, we had a, a few players at a casino, $500 table limit. They let them go to $1,000 just, yeah. just by asking. Uh, because those, those signs are there as sort of a placeholder. Yep. This is what we want to do. But, you know, if uh, if you're limiting, I don't know if you're available to do this. Actually, anyways, they let them do that. All right. So gambling revenue is uh, through the roof. Uh, a lot of it is sort of, I feel like a lot of it is this, this squeeze play. What's amazing is, come the pandemic, oh, my God. Everybody was like, casinos are dead. No one's going to have any money, you know. Uh, where are we going to be in two years from now? We have to reinvent the wheel. Come, come the and you know the minute that people you know the casinos are reopening, there's still mass mandate. People lost their minds. People came in droves to come back to Vegas. No? Yeah, I mean, I, again, I think it's a great experience, and 
you know, I, I believe there's a story about Jesus throwing the gamblers out of the temple, right? So gambling's been around for a long time. People, people like that competition. They like that risk. And gamblers have a, a better risk profile than the general public. So when we reopened from the pandemic, they, they did come back in droves because they're, they're accustomed to risk and, and they felt safe doing it. And this is what they want to do to, for their entertainment. Some people love watching Netflix for 18 hours a day. Some people love buying $5,000 purses or driving $100,000 cars. Gamblers like being in action. They like the environment. They like the rush. They like the competition. Not, you know, at some point, I'm not going to be able to shoot a basketball anymore or, or throw a baseball anymore. And where am I going to get my competition from? You know, it's probably going to be trying to beat a dealer. Yeah, 100 percent. All right. So there's only a few things we've actually talked about a lot of the evolution of Vegas, you know, the roof, whether they're going to close the strip, the I the 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 whole the tunnel is coming. Uh, I, I, as far as I know, all the casinos or the casinos, the, the big ones have all signed on to this. They all want a, a stop. Like yeah. who wouldn't want to stop right here? And that that's part of it, too. I, I've actually seen the the development plan effect. Uh, Elon, they, they put it out there. Uh, of all the stops they're going to have, uh, and basically every major casino is going to have a um, uh, what is it called? The tunnel, uh, the Elon Musk. So what is it? The uh, what's the name of the damn thing? I forgot already. The, uh, the boring, the boring hole, the boring yeah. tunnel. Yeah, boring tunnel stop. And most of the people that that I know, I, I have a friend that works at the convention center, and they do a great job of moving people yeah. around that circle. Uh, there hasn't been any real, you know, negative. Uh, a few people have to wait. Oh my God, you got to wait for yeah. something. But for the most part, they've seamlessly moved thousands of people around the convention center pretty quickly. It's very efficient, and uh, it's allowed them to work through some technology. I'm, I'm guessing they've used this to, to work out the kinks, and then eventually yeah. it'll just roll out through uh, throughout the strip. It'll be a great way to get where you're going. Because by the way, you know, not to say, you know. A couple of years ago, I wouldn't have wanted to talk ill of the monorail, but but realistically, we had someone who called Casino Quest, and they're like, "Listen, I'm at the MGM. Uh, I can either walk to Casino Quest or I could take the monorail." And you're like, "Dude, you should probably walk. You might get here faster because the monorail is going to be oofies." And in most cases, if the monorail comes on the back side of the casino, and then you got to walk, walk your through ass the through the casino, the other, it, other it's other a side. long way from Paradise to the Las Vegas Boulevard. Yeah, hundred so. percent. So it hasn't it hasn't been as much of a win. And I don't know how what it's done to ease traffic on this trip. I don't think a whole lot, to be no. honest with you. It, it, it I, I've ridden it twice, and it's yeah, it does not seem to be well laid out, well thought, well planned, yeah, well used. Again, it it doesn't go center strip it doesn't go to the airport where you want it to go yeah yeah uh, other than the convention center if you're going from the mgm the convention center fantastic yeah. do that that's 100 percent a win so i i do think that the other win i love that california the california's governor has finally signed on to expanding california from riverside at least adding another damn lane and now they've looked at quite literally doing the working the bonds to get this train the bullet train built i mean that They've been talking about that. They've been talking about that that longer than they've been talking about building the Fountain Blue, right? (laughs) Yeah, no, 100%. I mean, you know, Nevada's got that squared away. We clearly want these people to come in and leave and make this quicker. And and California has really sort of, uh, you know, been the cog, so to speak. Uh, there's there's lots of environmental issues that have to be addressed, you know, making this center lane and elevating this to Riverside. And there's already a train in the center. If you go out to Riverside, yeah. there's a train. You'd only have to go. You'd only be able to go as far as a certain distance. But I think it would do wonders if you could get here comfortably in an hour, hour and a half without traffic. Yeah, I think it would do. I think that would be a fantastic upgrade for Vegas. No, I think, you know, I, I saw a video on the Hyperloop the other day where it was, you know, was talking about getting mm-hmm. from here to New York in, in you know, an hour oh, and yeah. a half or whatever it is. Yeah. So, I, again, especially with what, what gas prices are right now. So Holy we can move smokes. large amounts of people without using uh, fossil fuels. Can I you imagine Elon to the rescue again, dude? Man. Oh, this I, guy. I, I, I like smart people. And he a quadrillionaire. Yeah, multi-trillionaire coming on, uh, on the thing. All right, well. We already talked about more professional sports teams. That's coming. The only thing we're missing is a basketball team. And it, that was the rumor the other day that we were getting an expansion team, and yes. then LeBron came out and said, "I want to own the team." Really? Yeah, he, oh. he, yeah, he came out with the LeBron other day behind on, it. That might on, be. I don't a know thing. if it was on his 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 podcast or his uh, the barbershop or the talk or whatever his thing is. Well, we we have some land across the street that was apparently that was funded, then it wasn't funded. This this poor guy has been trying to raise money for this property forever. <laughs> he has raised money multiple times. Yeah. I think I don't know that. Yeah, lots. lately I heard that uh, it wasn't didn't go through or didn't go through. I don't know who knows, but 
Anything on the north side of the strip, we're loving because that's yeah. near where we're at. So any of that stuff is good. All right, well, that we're coming to an end. We, we got to give some stuff away real quick. Uh, we're going to come up with a keyword, and then uh, we're going to be out of here. What do you got? Any questions? And then let's give – do we have enough likes? Oh, <clears throat> uh, we have 103 likes. Ooh, that's good. But cool. I do have one question. Go. With the future of Las Vegas, is there any resort that you would like not to be demolished like the Mirage? Well, you know what? Years ago, I would have said I used to love the Trop. They have not done well with the Trop. They they redid the lagoon. The the tower is just it's not in a good state. They they have the you know. <laughs> I I'm in with out with the old, in with the new. Yeah, I'm I, in. I'm 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 a big fan of of just upgrading and changing and, and evolving. And you know, yeah. the volcano was great. You've had. If you wanted to see it and you haven't seen it by now, better come back. Know, shame on you, though, right? Yeah, so right. Those are usually the ones that are complaining about it. If enough people were going to see it, they probably wouldn't tear it down. Yeah, and I'm, I'm excited to see a giant guitar uh, hotel on the strip. So giant guitar hotel will be interesting. They, I think the trap is going to be demolished. They're going to come up with a new trap. They've they've tried to work with the building and <clears throat> they've renovated a few times, but I I think it's done. Uh, I definitely have. I mean, I, I've lived here a long time. I have a lot of really wonderful memories, especially when, you know, Mirage, that was the casino I, I wanted to, you know, work my career. It never happened. Tropicana, another one. I'm really sad to see the Rio fall in disrepair, although it's got a new owner. <clears throat> and we're hoping they, they evolve that and make the investment. I would love to see that preserve, that Marnell property. I think it's a, it's such a unique property. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Marnell owned a construction company that built a lot of properties on the Las Vegas Strip and before building his own own yeah. property. I worked at the Rio at during its height, and it was easily uh, my my most memorable job as as a casino or a craft that dealer. That was my first job, first six weeks in Vegas. I oh, really? Rio, yeah. Yeah. So I love working there, and I love working for Marnell. It became something else later. Marnell was a fantastic casino operator. It was a great place to work. It was a very the culture of that place was literally fantastic. Go ahead. No, I, I think uh, everything you're saying is true. Mm -hmm. I, I I would guess that nothing that's been built in the last in the 2000s is going anywhere anytime soon. I think the innovations they made and the layouts and the architecture mm -hmm. is, is pretty safe. So when you start looking at the Bellagios, the Winds, things like that, I don't think they'll go away. But some of the older properties, I, I think probably will at some point. Yeah, no. I mean, eventually it's going to be, you know, the whole strip will evolve. It'll constantly evolve. There's there's lots of incentive to keep things moving. I know that even even Bally's as a property um, might have some plans. They uh, especially for that front area, the mezzanine yeah. area. I definitely I've heard rumors of a lot of things, other other areas of the strip that can be impacted. The south end still has lots of land. Lots of land. Lots of places to build out. Uh, there's more and more people coming. We, I, I think um, after next year... Bring, bring water with you when you come, please. Oh, bring water. It's getting hot. Holy crap. It's Just, oven hot, though. Oven I think hot. everybody that moves here should have to bring 500 gallons of water to dump into Lake Mead. To put into Lake Mead? Yeah, no. They were uh, someone supposedly dropped something in Lake Mead. Like just you just have to go in and get it nowadays. It's not even you can stand and walk around. It's not thing. It's, you know, sure. not much. Water. It's pretty sad. Years ago, you used to go out there. Water was right there. You could almost reach down and just touch it. Now, not so much, dude. You're gonna break your neck on that fall. All right. Um, but apart from that, I mean, do you see anything else happening to Vegas? About the final words, what do you think? Where does Vegas go from here? Upward. I think Upward, we, yeah. we've, we've continued to do that throughout mm -hmm. time and history. I think the history of Las Vegas is very interesting, mm -hmm. and I, I think it's going to continue to go forward. We have a lot of great operators, a lot of smart people uh, that are going to figure it out and give guests what they want. Like I said, there's there's nothing better than telling a story of, of Las Vegas when you're on vacation. So I, I don't see us losing that destination status, and, and I don't see us losing that demand. Is there anything you're most excited about? I'm most excited about one thing. I'm most excited about a baseball team. I don't uh, know. I'm see? a baseball guy, so I would love to see, you know, take my kids to a ball game. You know, like we have we have a minor league yep. team, which is amazing, but nothing like being at a big league ballpark. And I just think every baseball fan goes on a road trip. So mm -hmm. can you imagine when the, the Yankees, the Red Sox, the Dodgers play here and 30,000 people like we see with, with the Golden Knights and the Raiders? 
Like it's great for the city. It, it's it, great it for the city. It stimulates the economy and all and those all those local games would be a fantastic draw. Yeah, no doubt about it. And it turns out Vegas is we're really good fans. Yeah, a lot of people were unsure when they when they before the Raiders when the Golden Knights came. They're yeah. like, you know, Vegas, dude. Gold, you know. Well, and, and I think it has really brought a sense of community about. That's the first thing I noticed when I moved here. Everybody's yeah. got a brick wall around their house. You don't know your neighbors because everybody's working different hours. I think the Golden Knights did a great job of drawing the community in together and giving us one common thing to root for. No, I agree. It was amazing to see so many. I grew up around hockey. I played As hockey. I. Yeah. yeah, I grew up in the Northeast. You had to you had to be hockey or you got beat up by the hockey stick. Yeah. You know. So I grew up around hockey, and it was because in Vegas hockey there there was actually two hockey arenas when the Santa Fe opened. Uh, they had hockey, and then when Fiesta Rancho opened, also has hockey. In fact, it's still that's the only thing that's still going over there. By the way, yeah. Fiesta Rancho closed except for the hockey rink. So, and it was they were always busy. There were always people interested in, in playing hockey, ice skating, that kind of thing. Uh, and but but I, I definitely was on the fence about whether or not we would be a hockey destination. Uh, or but look at us now. 100%. Everybody's got a Golden Knights thing. My my middle son is taking hockey lessons at the new Henderson. Uh, hockey complex and it was yeah. unbelievable to see how many people were out there in pads and shooting Dude, the puck crazy. and learning to skate and really we we really have taken to it and, and kudos to the Golden Knights because they could have easily failed if, if they didn't run that right and they didn't mm. do things well but yeah. man what a first class organization and, and it's really spurned yeah. growth in the city you know, we used to have, what was the minor league hockey team? They were clients of mine. My, I had a company, development company back in the day, and I actually developed one of the graphics that they that the they Wranglers? used. The Wranglers? The Wranglers. The Wranglers. So if, if any of you guys remember, they had this sort of stick figure, interactive stick figure, doing this little animation. That was my team that did that. Uh, it was like it was like a brother, and two brothers, something like this, that ran that, that, that owned the Wranglers. I'm not sure. But... Uh, I'm very excited. So I, I love the fact that the professional sports team definitely had that conversation about how a baseball team would add a lot of dates and just yeah. be a constant thing, uh, especially during the slower times of year, during the summer, because baseball obviously is, a, is kind of a summer. It's known to be a summer sport. I can't wait for the sphere. Oh, that, that's... That um, is literally the newest... I, I follow those updates on Twitter. Um, I see pictures of it every day. Yeah. That thing is a modern marvel. I've even been looking at buying a space near the sphere. Uh, so I can live near the sphere. I, I'm, I'm, so Howard Hughes Parkway has a few residential spaces in there. Uh, and I, I think the sphere is going to be such a thing. So if, if you guys haven't looked into the sphere, it's coming and, and they're putting the final, they're at, they're at the, like the final part of the ceiling. The, just everything about this thing is just so amazing how they're going to be able to broadcast in different languages, direct yeah. to your seat, to your, you know, no matter what language you know. They're going to turn that place invisible. I just don't know where anybody's going to park. Uh, that's, that's why I want a place because I, I could pay for my place with parking yeah. spaces. You know what I mean? Just go. have it's like three parking. parking spaces. Venetian's gonna be, be like, listen, not here. You know, because right now you go to the Venetian. That's a little secret. You can park for free, and they don't. They're not charging, right? Yeah. But they're gonna when that sphere opens. But I'm so excited. I can't wait. It's a it's a one of a kind. They're, they're gonna try to build a few more of those around the world. Yeah. But but this is going to be the first. The first. And the first. Have they said what the first outer shell is going to look like? Are they going to run it like an emoji, like that thing at Resorts I World? mean, I that's why I'm just. It's just so interesting. The yeah. fact, the shape of it. You know, every all the news about it, every press release they've done, everything is just so. E even Dennis, who's a big tech nerd, is really curious about what. So we're both enamored by this thing. Quite literally, we see it all the time because it's quite. Li it's right down the street. You know, on our way to Primal Steakhouse. Well, that place is fantastic. Where is that? Listen, it's got all the strip steakhouses just picking their teeth over this one. So it's uh, it's the Boulevard Mall. I wouldn't recommend going inside the mall. Luckily, <laughs> this place is facing outward. It, where, it's, do, where do you park for that? You might want to Uber over. I'm yeah, not sure. Yeah. <laughs> Boulevard Mall. You know, when I first moved in this area, that area of town, it was, it was relatively new, and it was quite literally the destination. And then Fashion Low kind of took their fashion show here, took yeah. their win, and became a destination of its own. But... Primal Steakhouse, it's, it's fairly affordable. Top rated. It's considered one of the best steakhouses in Vegas, according to not only TripAdvisor, uh, but that mother-daughter team that goes out and rates everybody. Oh, crap. I can't remember. But anyways, really good. A really good steak, dude. Uh, and some of the steakhouses that are, like, ridiculously expensive and you pay for the celebrity chef that me and Dennis have been to. <laughs> right, Dennis? Oof. Oof. Can I can I say their name? Can I say? Their I name? mean, we don't want them coming over here and hating us. But our experience may not be your experience because a lot of people 
Emerald Lagasse, you can go ahead and say it. Go ahead. It's fine. It's fine. Demonicals suck. Don't go. We we've been going. We've been like we've been taking off, and we got a great. We our next Vegas Tycoon vlog for those of you who are are still here is going to be. They have a they have a program out here called Three Squares, where all the a lot of restaurants. Uh, they have this is Three Squares Week, and Three Squares is an organization here in Las Vegas that that raises money for families to have three square meals. So. If 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 you are hungry or or you are uh, you know food deprived, if you're your food anxiety, you don't get enough food. This company, uh, you know, it, it works with networks with restaurants throughout the valley, and we just ate at Neiman Marcus Cafe, and we had a very affordable meal, twenty dollars a person. That's a three course meal, and then a portion of that goes to this three square organization. The wonderful thing about it, if you happen to be in Vegas this week, I promise you. Week. It's his restaurant week. Yeah. Look it up because there's a lots of restaurants on that list that a lot of people normally would be too expensive to go to. So Bobby Flay has a steakhouse out here that's a little pricey. The steakhouse is, and it, for eighty bucks a person, still pricey, but not as pricey as if you didn't do the eighty dollars. And some of them have forty dollars. You get a three or four uh, course meal. Mostly it's three course meal after you know three square kind of thing. Yeah. But you get this whole experience at a restaurant that a lot of us, you know, may not be able to afford. And a portion of that, a portion of every single meal that you do goes towards. And a lot of them are at, you know, it, it, it runs a gamut. $10, $10 for three courses at some places, 20 40 80 And I think that's the top is 80 But if you're interested, definitely uh, look that up. It's three square me It's three squares dot com. Wait, uh, I, I don't know what the it's uh, a restaurant week. Just search up yeah, restaurant. Just search week. up restaurant yeah. week. But it's a fantastic cause. Fantastic organization. Uh, and it, it does a lot of wonderful stuff. All right, any last minute questions? Because we're about to end this and go home. We got other things to do. Uh, last question with Park Got MGM. Who? Uh, with Park MGM and other casinos, do yep. you anticipate more uh, smoke free casinos? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, 100%. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm actually surprised that some casinos went back to smoking, you know, when, when it was taken away during the pandemic. It seemed like an easy transition. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, there, there's some fear there because. Smoking and gambling has gone together. You know, every scene you see in a movie, you, you mm -hmm. see him smoking. And, mm -hmm. you know, you look at some of the uh, international cultures where smoking is still a lot more prominent than it is in the States and, and, and they're gamblers. So I, there, there's a little fear aspect there. But mm -hmm. I, I would imagine that it, it's going to go the way of uh, the dodo bird. Yeah, no, 100%. So the first, you know what the first non smoking casino on the strip was? No longer around Silver City. And uh, didn't go well for that. <laughs> that was a long time ago. It, it was amazing that they, they did that at the time because everyone was like, oh, hell no. And, and it really was hell no. I yeah. mean, uh, it killed their business. But uh, I, I think now that's not a thing. Smoking has it's, it's dead at down. a all-time all -time yeah. low, yeah. You, you don't see a whole lot of people that smoke. And most people that do smoke, smoke outside, yeah. go to the smoking area. Remember when airports, you used to sit in a little vacuum sealed? Because yeah. I, I was a smoker. And you would go in there, and you, you literally couldn't even see who was in there. It was just this nonstop. It was smoke just sucked into this you know, one area. When bingo rooms, so bingo rooms stopped allowing, or some of them, I guess, still do, because Lauren plays bingo, and she smokes. So I'm guessing as long as they're, sections, they're yeah. smoking sections, and you'll see it, this one section, this vacuum sealed room, just all smoked up, and everybody's in there just getting high on nicotine, you know. Uh, but I, I, uh, I love the non-smoking. I didn't have to change layouts as often. Didn't yeah. Have the cigarette burns in the rails, the chairs. Yeah, hundred percent. So I, I really do. I think that's not a thing. Already, casinos have given up on you know cigars. They have a cigar room. If you want to smoke a cigar, you got to go to the cigar room. They don't allow cigars. Uh, but the smoking is going bye bye because it's actually worked out really well. People, it's also it's also a safety issue for the employees. You know, they don't want you don't want you know smoke going in their face. And then ten years later, the employee says, "Hey, I think I got cancer from your secondhand smoke." So that that's been a thing. I, I will say this: you know, a lot of the strip properties have been very proactive in, in, in creating these ventilators that really suck the smoke up oh. really well. Do a great the, job the of it. The first job I worked at, man, it was you could see the smoke. And yeah. I used to change my dealer's uniform in my driveway. That's how that's how bad it was. <laughs> yeah. But it, it, you know, I don't smell it on my suits when I go home anymore. Yeah. The, the ventilation is is amazing in modern casinos. Yeah, really, especially the big ones. I mean, some of the smaller ones, maybe not. The older ones, not so much. But and Dotties, of course, man, you got to go in there with a the vent. I wear my mask sometimes when I go in the dot. Yeah, I gotta. Anyways, they gotta rethink that. All right, what else? Is that it? That's it. 
All right, guys, thank you so much. Don't forget to RSVP to our event, August 17th to the 21st. And if you're planning to come out to Vegas, casinoquest.biz. And we also have a shop, casinoquest.com. And, of course, uh, thank you so much for being part of our experience, part of our family. And we look forward to seeing you here in Vegas. Thank you to my guest, Brian. Thank, thank you, you, sir, very Appreciate much. Appreciate it. It's fun. Uh, yes, but this is going to get a lot of views. I hope you guys learned a little something. And uh, more to come. We're going to try and raise the profile. This is what this podcast needs to be. Uh, we need more of this. But thank you, guys. Take care. See you next time. Vegas out. Bye, guys. That was fantastic. Did it go good? It went